development. And also uh, tonight, I'd like to uh, honor our two seniors, uh, one, uh, Finn Rooney, uh, Tara. Or you can come down if you want. Okay, you can stay down here. Um, and our next senior tonight, uh, four year starter for us, great kid. Uh, played multiple positions for us. You can come. Thank you. Hey, it's Lance Hall for HCTV. We're here for senior night. Uh, Hazen Union Varsity Baseball Wildcats getting ready to take on their arch rival People's Academy Wolves. Our lone senior this afternoon is the one and only Ethan Shoplin. We wanted to bring him up and give him a little cameo. Ethan, it's been quite a year. Soccer season started late. Ba yeah. Basketball season started late. Baseball's been normal. You gotta be feeling good about that. Yeah, feeling good. A lot of Ready emotion going out here today? Yeah, there's a little bit. It feels a little bit different. I don't know if it's just because it's my last one or because I'm the only one, but definitely a little emotion. The only one and sort of like the final senior to graduate from sports this year. Um, yeah. In basketball, there was what, you, Isaiah, and... Just, just me and Isaiah. You and Isaiah. Yep. And soccer, there were a few more. Yeah, uh, four of us, I, I believe. Okay, but you've been the lone wolf throughout. Three sports star. A <laughs> um, lot of memories up here. Mm -hmm. Let's go over to Hudson Fields for a moment. Give me first memory that pops into your mind from a soccer? It doesn't even have to be your favorite one, just first one to pop into your head um, from a soccer game. Probably first one to pop into mind, freshman year, uh, playing against Enosburg. It was my varsity debut, so. Star goalie, you started what, sophomore? Yeah, but I, I was pulled up for uh, playoffs of uh, freshman year. I That's right, when Jack Nemi got hurt, yeah. correct? Okay. Yeah. Then you scan over here to the gym, a lot of basketball played in there. How about a favorite memory from there? Uh, probably, um, Watching my brother play, uh, that was the earliest one. Um, you know, he was an amazing basketball player. He was an amazing athlete as well. Yeah. And you followed in his footsteps well. We've called you mini shopper, <laughs> but I think today you're just going to be the shopper, you know? How about down here on the diamond? Last game going out now. Do you have any, any memories from? Uh, not playing here specifically, but uh, over in Williamstown on sophomore year, winning our first playoff game in 12 years since 2007. That was definitely a special moment. That's excellent. Ethan Choplin, once again, it's his senior uh, senior game, last senior game here, uh, regular season game. Hopefully we're going to get some playoffs game as well. Yeah. And I just want to say it's been an absolute joy and pleasure to watch you play every sport that you played. You carry yourself with amazing integrity and, and fortitude and everything. Do you have any advice that you would give to a future athlete here at Hazen Union as they move up through the ranks if they're going to be a Hazen Wildcat? Uh, one thing I remember my dad telling me when I was young is play every game like your grandma's watching. So that's great. That'd great, probably be it. Great advice. It is great to be a Hazen Wildcat, isn't it? It is. It's All great right. to be a Hazen Wildcat. Congratulations, Lisa. Thank you very much. Thank you. Once again, we want to thank everybody who has enjoyed watching Hazen Boys Varsity Baseball today and this season. Lots of great compliments and comments on the broadcast, which we are always thankful for.
without our sponsors and the people watching. We could not be us without you. And Buffalo Mountain Power Sports and Sperry Lawn Care has been with us all season, so a special thanks to them. A couple of spot showers on my way in today, but I think it's cleared off now. Gonna have some cloud cover, a little breeze, taking the mugginess away. Good afternoon for baseball. As James Salvis is about to take the helm, as the first batter for PA comes up. Yes, Jack Lund is gonna stand in to face Andrew the Mahler Menard on the mound for the Wildcats. And we'll point out that James Montgomery is back behind the plate now. He is. The return of James, or apparently he played last night. Here's the pitch from Menard. That's in there for a strike and we're underway. Best way to start right there for a pitcher. Oh yeah. At least. No. Menard, as we've seen, throwing the ball very well this season for yes. the Wildcats. He's gonna kick and deliver. And swing and a miss by Lund, and it's 0-2. And we've also been corrected. Andrew was not the first hockey player for Hazen. Ivan he was corrected not. us on that. Who was the first hockey player? Uh, Jaden Perry. So Andrew, the second hockey player for Hazen. Yes. And the pitch. That is rocketed out to center field. Baker and under it, and he puts it away. Or Shopland and under it. I'm That's sorry. right, Ethan Little back. Shop. The yeah. shop, today he is the shopper. The shopper. He has graduated up to the shopper. Yes, on senior night, he'll take his brother Russ's nickname. I'm sure Russ won't mind. I don't think he will. As now Ben Allickson stands in for the People's Academy Wolves. Excellent pitcher and a good hitter for the Wolves as well. As he faces a good pitcher on the other side in Andrew Menard. And there's a strike by Menard. Menard throwing strikes early as always. He's on his game so far today. He is, he's gonna need to be. <laughs> is that a little bias there, uh, Sorry. James Elvis? <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna have fun today. We are. Of course, James uh, James's alma mater is the is People's Academy. And, and mine is Hazen Union. So hey. Yeah. You gotta you know, you gotta follow your yeah. heart. One one count now. Menard kicks and delivers. And swing and a miss. Good pitch by Menard. High. But Swing and a miss by Alexson. One, two count now. Menard is gonna kick and deliver. That's gonna be high for a ball. First pitch was in that same location, but got Alexson to swing. Fooled him once, didn't fool him twice. Nope. Fool him once, shame on you. Fool so him twice, say. shame on me, yep. Yep. And that's fouled back by Alexson. Count remains 2-2. Two -two. Big turnout today from both sides, as you can tell. The Route 15 rival, People's Academy Wolves. Longtime nemesis of the Hazen Wildcats. As that's going to bounce in there. Full count now to Alexson. See what Menard can do here with a full count. And here's the pitch. It's fired in there, hit hard on the ground by Alex, and ooh, Rivard with a nice scoop, almost slips. Hard throw to first, and that's gonna get by. One thing we saw on Saturday from uh, Rivard, a throwing error at uh, short, it's, uh, I think it's because he tried to hurry and just throw it as hard as he can. Yeah, Alexson had a good jump coming out at the box. He did, Alexson's and, fast. Uh, Rivard had to kind of work to get the scoop. The ball was almost behind him. Sure was. Made a good snag to, to grab it, though, and save, you know, what possibly could have been a double. Yep. It turned out to be a double anyway mm -hmm. on the uh, throw, but. Yep. Alex Lamphere to stand in now for the Wolves to face Menard. Menard is going to kick and deal. Lamphere shows bunt, and he goes for a strike. Menard's going to take a look to second. Another look. Now he throws. And that is low for a ball. Throw down by Montgomery. It's going to be blocked by Rivard. Luckily won't get too far. 
Now, we did hear with James, the AC sprain was on his left arm, correct? Yes. So, so it was throwing, on his throwing arm hand. wasn't affected. Yeah, throwing yeah. arm wasn't affected. It was his catching hand. As it showed right there. Yes. You know, throwing early and often as Little Shopper would behind the dish. Letting him know he's there. Yeah. And now the pitch from Menard. That is hit hard, foul over behind third. Over towards the PA fans. Or some of the PA fans that were down there, I should say. Good crowd today, as yeah. always, for a PA Hazen event. As always, whether it's soccer, basketball, baseball, it does not matter. It is a two and one count now to Lamphere. Menard kicks and delivers. And that is ripped hard right to Rivard. He's going to go to third, and he is going to get the out. Good decision there by Rivard. Alexson, you know, Alexson was on the move, you know, to yeah. third. A lot of times in that, you might try and take a step halfway and go back and make him throw to first. But Easy flip throw for Rivard. Yep. As Augie Levin stands in now for the People's Academy Wolves. Menard kicks and fires. That's in there for a strike. See the umpire will let you know. That's what I like to see, good enthusiasm behind the plate by the umpire. Always fun to see. Yeah. Levin hits for a little bit of power, I think, for the Wolves. I haven't seen Augie play very much. That ball is hit on the ground. Ooh, takes a mean hop and Rooney can't scoop it up. And Levin with good speed is gonna dig it out at first base. That was a tricky one. That was a mean hop off this Hazen Wildcat Hudson Field grass. I know from experience. <laughs> As Landon Doobie, one of the People's Academy seniors, is going to stand in. Doobie, also a very good soccer and hockey player for the Wolves. All Mountain Vortex in effect again today, as always. Hopefully keeping things clear now after Hopefully. that little bit of brief inclementness earlier. Menard is going to kick and deliver. That's ripped into center field. And that's Drops down. down. It's down. Shopland almost slips. And Lamphere is going to slide into a dive across home plate. Whatever works gets the run. People's Academy up 1-0 as Landon Doobie with the RBI single rocketed hard to center field. PA draws first blood here today. Puts him up one zip on a nice hit right to the gap out there in left Was center. Right in between, <clears throat> who's in left? Right in between Jaden Baker and Ethan Choplin, who are two very capable outfielders. Yep. As now Derek Baxter stands in for the Wolves. Menard with the pitch. That is in there for a ball. Looked pretty good though. A little bit low. One oh now to Baxter. Here's the pitch. That's in there for a strike. One one count. Two outs here in the top of the first. Men on first and second for PA. Like the man Baker over there, as always. In attendance. Menard kicks and fires. That's hit hard on the ground. Yeah. Oh, and Davison, a la Bill Buckner at second base. Couldn't quite come up with it. Couldn't. I think he might have uh, either lost it on the ground or maybe I was say the, the, run, runner, the runner was right there as the ball was coming through, yeah. As Hayden Frazee stands in now for the People's Academy Wolves. Bases Frazee, loaded. very, very good first baseman and can pitch very well, too. And James, I'll say this, base is drunk for the Wolves. Yes, base is drunk for the People's Academy Wolves, as Dennis Eckersley would say, who I hope is on the call for the Red Sox tonight. I heard it with, I think, is it one out or two outs? Two, two outs. outs. Strike one. Yes, See strike. if Andrew can get himself out of this and just uh, keep it down to one run here yep. in this inning. And let the Hazen Bats come up for a chance. Menard is going to step off and throw over to third. He's safe. Menard kicks and delivers. And there's a rip out to center field by Frazee, but right to Shopland, he puts it away. And the inning is over. Andrew got out of, out of a shirt jam there, you know, with the bases loaded. He and did. And the People's Academy hitters were hitting 
But uh, in the end of it, yeah. PA does go up one you know, zip. Could have been a lot worse. You know, very solid contact there, though, by a lot of the Wolves batters, but the Hazen defense right there. That's it, Hayden. You know, Hayden. Making the place. Hayden Frazier hits the ball pretty hard. Good in the field, too. I'm like an encyclopedia of people's academy knowledge. I'll do my best to keep up with you, James. <laughs> Shouldn't have much trouble, Lance. Oh, I don't know. Well, you probably know just as much, if not more, about Hazen as I do about PA. I can tell you a lot from the 80s. Yeah, I was going to say, you've also been around a, while, a little bit longer than I have. So. You see... Uh, see what happens here. It's like I said, if Ben Allen can respond. Yes. But you're saying the pitcher for uh, yeah. PA is stellar. Yes, very. He no hit these Wildcats earlier in the year right. to Rooney's one hitter against that. But Menard off to a pretty pretty good start on the mound. Did get out of a bases loaded jam. The kid on the mound for the Wolves throws heat. I mean straight petrol. Although Menard throws pretty hard on the other side. That he does. You know, a hockey player, you gotta have that good strength. Absolutely. You know, not, you know, pretty nice day out today. You know, not too humid. You know, we had a nice little breeze. Had a little breeze there for a little bit. I'd like to see that kick back up. I would. Keep the black flies away here. Yep. Shoplin to lead off, as always, for the people, uh, for the Hazen Wildcats. Ooh. You just got PA on your mind today, James. I do, I guess. Ethan, once again, I'm glad we had those few minutes with him. I mean, it just, again, shows you what a great kid he is. You know, we kind of put him on the spot. He came up here, he grabbed the headset, slapped it on, did a great job with, with the questions and everything. Sure and did. that's the way he is. You know, th this kid will do anything, any sport. He's always been there. Whatever needs to be done, he is willing to get in and do it and put the time in to do it well. Yes. So you know, that when called upon, he's ready. Little Shopper, you know, great athlete, great kid, like Lance was just saying, works extremely hard at everything he does, even you know, just hard worker, but that's the Shopland way. Three yeah. sports star. I mean, you know, starting goalie from his sophomore year for the for the soccer team. Yep. Um, played, played in a game his freshman year against yep. Enosburg. I think I was at that one. Basketball. Yep. Does everything you need on the court that you, does. that you ask him to do. And, you know, out here with baseball, same way. And like you said, Russ, his brother, had one of the best games you've ever called against Twin Valley here. That was an amazing playoff game. He just stepped up that day and just took that game over. He did. It seemed like every shot that left his hands was yeah. going in. And he was also a heck of a pitcher. He was. And a uh, great soccer player. Was. You know, if your name's Shopland, you're a pretty good athlete. Let's see what he can do with the bat. Went five for five on Saturday. Two hits in the first game, three hits in the second game. That's right. You texted me that. I missed the second game. And, and a hit uh, by pitch. And you said that... Uh, with Ethan. an inside the park home run with five RBIs on the day. A torrid game. He was my player of the game easy for the second game. Looks like we got walk-up songs today. <laughs> Little shopper to stand in to face Ben Allison on the other side. Seagulls come alive over on the Wildcat bench. Sure do. And here's the pitch from Allison. That is low dug out by Levin behind the plate. Ball one. Two very good teams facing each other today. Did you hear the Wildcats call him Papa Shop? There's a pitch low and two balls in a row by Ben Allison. This should be epic. <laughs> should be. <laughs> Chirping on both sides, hopefully. Yeah, I'm hearing some on the other side as well. They're behind the dugout, of course. So listen for the echo. Oh, yeah. As it is 3-0 now to Little Shopper. Guess Alexson just doesn't want to uh, pitch to the big bat of Little Shopper. Will he take or will he swing? Okay, it would have to be really, really good for Shopland to swing here. And it was good, but... Er, you know, a lot of times you're just going to take in that situation right, regardless. Exactly. So, 3-1 now to Shopland. The Shopper. I won't call him Little Shopper. The today. Shopper. The Shopper. Oh, yeah. Here we go. All right. 
As that is ripped hard, almost take Joe, oh, almost take Joe's, Joe's, Joe's head off. Joe's of head off over there first, yeah. That was a Joe, rocket. Joe better put on a helmet if he's going to stand over there. Oh man, that thing was hit hard. Quick reflexes though. Three and two. Full count now. Shoplin's got to protect. Pitch from Alexson. And that's hit hard on the ground. Frazee scoops it up, and he's going to step on first. No problem for the first out. Hit hard off the bat, though. That's one thing. Shopland always makes hard contact. Never hits Solid. the ball soft. T-Rex up to the plate now. Another kid who can really hit. Yes. Tyler Rivard. You know, it's weird because all the PA parents are kind of looking around seeing the Kella Hazen game. And it's probably weird. That Twice. ball is hit hard, Fall. and that is past Chandler Follinsby over there at shortstop. For a base knock for T-Rex Tyler Rivard. And that is going to bring in the butcher, the baker, the home run maker in Jaden Baker. There, I won't call him his brother. Uh, at least this time. Yeah, I, I probably will at some point today. Told Isaiah I would uh, probably call him that because yeah. Isaiah is in attendance. And, and Jaden thought, Jaden, uh, Isaiah thought that was a great compliment to Jaden. Yeah, Jayden. he said that would be a compliment to Jaden. See if uh, Hazen goes off with that uh, aggressive base running that we've seen in a lot of the yeah. games. I think they will. And there's a strike by Alexson. Two, Baker. How does the PA catcher rank in uh, arm strength? His arm is solid. Getting, solid. But good defensively. Nothing really gets by him. Mm -hmm. Pitch from Alexson. Ooh. Baker, I can feel the breeze up here. I sure can. I don't know if that a, was the wind or Baker's swing. A mighty swing. That was. If he made contact with that. <laughs> Would have been gone in a little, yeah. into Little Moyle River. Yeah, I was headed down to Brochu Sitco service. <laughs> <laughs> but he didn't. And that one's one fouled, fouled off. Back. Didn't swing quite as hard, but fouled it off. <laughs> Just got to try and straighten that one out. 0-2 oh now to Baker. Baker, who has pitched a little bit for the Wildcats this, mm -hmm. this year, made a brief appearance in one of the games we called. 0 2 pitch from Alexson. And it's just outside for a ball. 1 and 2. I think Jaden was able to hold himself up on that check. Almost went around. People's in year number five on these uniforms. <laughs> Got him my freshman year. That was irrelevant. But there's the pitch from Allison. Swing and a miss by Baker. There's that heat I was telling you about, Lance. That high fastball. Absolutely. That's going to get a lot of guys to swing and miss. If a good hitter like Baker is swinging and missing. Jaden not quite as mighty on that swing. I don't nope. quite feel the breeze. And up the here. helmet's gone. <laughs> oh, shoot. I forgot to look. Yep. I didn't. I saw the tail end of it. Okay. Rooney stands in now for the Wildcats. We know he's a great all around ball player. Oh, and it hits him in the head. Bounces off the top. <laughs> they hit really the Wildcat bench. Keeping it going. I remember as a player here, this was a game we looked forward to all the time. Yeah. And so there's a spider on your head, so I got it. Oh, you got it? Okay, yep. thank you. <laughs> Lyle takes it off the noggin, trots down the first. Aisha Gould is going to stand in now. Men at first The and weird second. lefty, as I like to call him. Throws left, bats right. That's right. Two outs. It's actually common to see a righty lefty throw right bat left. It's common in baseball. Two on, two out. Pitch from Alexson, swing and a miss by Gould. Cats definitely not afraid to take their cuts today at these pitches. Sure Just aren't. can't make contact. They sure are. Here's the pitch from Alexson. Just a bit outside for a ball. A la Bob Euchre. I defy you to have a pitch outside and not say just a bit outside. I don't think you can as a commentator. You can't. Bob Euchre was a genius. <laughs> he was great. And swing, miss by Gould. One and two now. Gould got to protect. Alex has definitely got him swinging at everything today. Sure does. Ben. One and two, two outs. One and two, two down for the People's Academy Wolves. There's a pitch and a swing and a miss at a low pitch. Gould is frustrated. As after one, 
PA1, Hazen zero. Hazen with a chance. Runners at first and second. Couldn't quite capitalize. Can't get their bats on the ball. Good pitching on both sides, though. Yep. So very tough to hit the ball when you're facing some good pitching. And take a second to thank our sponsors. You're watching Hazen Boys Varsity Baseball playing Peoples Tuesday, May 25th, 2021. We are sponsored by Buffalo Mountain Power Sports, 472-5522. Buffalo Mountain supports Hazen. And Sperry Lawn Care, 745-8336. When others can't cut it, they can. Streaming uh, on, your dial, uh, on your cable dial at HCTV channel 1080 and on the web at www.hctv.us. Liz on camera, as always. Yep. Liz, you know, is phenomenal at camera. Might be better than Griff. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, those fighting words. He hasn't had a chance to try baseball yet. Yeah. He has not. So Liz is better by default in that That's regard. True. That's true. Now, Liz, have we ever covered baseball before up here for HCTV? I don't believe so. I don't believe so either. So Liz, this is inaugural season here. Also, Liz, have you done camera for basketball at all ever? Once. Once? It was scary. <laughs> it was <laughs> a bit different than uh, a bit we different have, than uh, trying to film baseball because you got a you know camera and basketball it's moving so many ways. We have done many a soccer game though. Oh yes. Sorry, Griff, if you're gonna watch this at some point. I can think of a couple times being up on the roof where I almost got blown off in the wind. Griff, my former color man in basketball. Griff and I make a heck of a team. Call in basketball, as do him and Lance. Griff is just a good guy to commentate with. But I don't know. But he can't make donuts. He cannot make donuts, so. He does do the frying. Though. He does do the frying, okay. Okay, so Griff has a pardon. No, actually, right. he's made the donuts. He's made the donuts? Hey, I, I right. Here we go. Okay. As but we George know when Thompson it comes to donuts, in for the people's he can't make the wolves. donuts. He can. As that just is in the dirt, dirt by Menard, blocked by Montgomery behind the plate. Good to see Montgomery back. Yeah, James had to set out a few games with that uh, sprained AC, but he's back now. Doing okay now. Menard is going to kick and deliver. That's a little chop shot off the bat of Thompson right over the head of Davison and into right field for a base knock. Split right in the infield and the outfield. Dropped in for the sure base did, hit. You know, when you're going to get a base hit, it's you kind of want to pitch it. Uh, Swing kind of just like that. You know, just kind of one-handed swing and poke it right off the end of the bat. A little blooper. As Chandler Fallins being an excellent all-around baseball player for the People's Academy Wolves is going to stand in. Also plays soccer and basketball for the Wolves. Excellent athlete. He is. Pitch from Menard. That is going to be inside for a ball. Look good. It did look good to me. Here's the pitch. That is fouled so, back. Mike Baker not quite close enough to make the yeah, grab there. That's going to go into the apple tree. Sure is. That apple tree knocks down a lot of baseballs over there. Thank God it's there. Hazen I, might have a couple dents in the bricks. I have learned not to park my car back here anymore. I go yeah. over the side now. Very good idea. I got that from you, James. Yep. I told my mom today. I was like, Mom, you're parking awful close. Yeah. As that is Solid. roped, another shot to that gap yeah. between second and first. When you're, you know, Lance, that's the thing. If you have the ability to aim your swing, to be able to move the ball in directions all around the field, if you can hit it to that gap in right field, you're likely yeah, going to get a knock every time. Yeah. As Fallensby gets a knock, and Menard again in a bit of a jam with two on and no out. As back to the top, top is second. Jack Lund steps in for the People's Academy Wolves. Bernard now is going to kick and deliver. That is fouled back. Baker might be able to make a play on that one. Uh, I don't know who that was, but. That is, uh, give me a minute and I'll, Derek Richardson, I believe. Derek Richardson. I think. I think, I think it was. Richardson. I saw him drive by in his truck. That made the, uh, the two-handed grab. D. Rich. The basket catch. Excellent baseball player in his own right. Great basketball player as well. Very good. Good athlete, Joe. Yeah. He worked hard. And I played up at Linden. Soccer. Oh, okay. Menard. I did not know that. Menard now 1-1 one, one to Lund. Menard kicks and fires. 
That is Hit a skyrocket high. high. Yeah. Rooney calls for it and puts it away. Lyle Rooney. Gets an out for his pitcher. I think either him or Menire could have played that. But Lyle has probably seemed good to have a Lyle. bead on it the he entire sure did. time. As Ben Alexson to stand in now for the second time for the People's Academy Wolves. Menard with one out, two on. Here's the pitch from Menard. That is just high. Ball one. One zero pitch from Menard. That is going to be low. Runners go. Not much trouble to move up there. When a ball gets to the backstop like that, it's pretty hard for a catcher to get there in time and make a good throw. Both runners had a pretty good jump as well. They sure did. 2-0 now to Alexson from Menard. The Mahler, Andrew Menard. In trouble once again. He is. And he has gone 3-0 to Alexson, but we've seen him work out of this before. The great ones find a way. First inning, he looked pretty sharp. The first bunch of batters. He did. See if he can get himself righted here. Menard with the 3-0 pitch, and there is a strike. Nice pitch there. Clutch. To Ben Alexson. Almost said Charlie there, which is Ben's brother's name, <laughs> who I played baseball with. <laughs> and Alexson hits it hard on the ground. Rivard, he goes home. The tag at the plate. And I think he, he is out at home plate. Rivard, you know, making, you know, going the unorthodox way in the field. You know, earlier got to play at third to get right. a lead runner, and now he goes home to get the lead Solid runner. Solid throw at home just to uh, keep PA from it was. He the run, faked, so. You know, you saw him fake a throw and then yep. go. Smart heads up play. It was. You know, a lot of times guys are just going to scoop that up and go to first, you yeah. know, and just eat the run. But Runners Rivard, out to corners. Yep, Rivard makes a risky play, though, to go home. Gets it. Great throw. Great catch by Montgomery. Sure Good was. Tag. Great tag. Good play all around. Here's the pitch from Menard. And Lamphere swings and misses. Hear that loud pop of the mid on the throwback by Montgomery. The only thing better than the pop of the mid is the crack of the bat. Sure is. But we won't be hearing a lot of that as no. they use metal instead of wood. Pitch by Menard. Runner was going. And nice catch by Tyson Davison over there at second Dropped base. Dropped down low. Hard to see him between the runner and the umpire standing there. But Tyson looked he like sure he got did. down low to Dropped keep down low and just scooped it right up, no problem. As Menard does get out of the jam and not allow a run. Thanks he does. to some good defense, too, by his Hazen Wildcat counterparts. That's right. The defense behind him playing excellent. So keeps the score at one zip. We'll drop to the bottom of the second here. As Hazen will come back up to bat here in a few minutes. Sure will, Lance. You know, it looks like that Hall Mountain Vortex is paying off for us It today. is. It's spun all the clouds right out of here. So it'll give me opportunity to light up our sponsor sheet here. <laughs> and we are sponsors today are Buffalo Mountain Power Sports, 472-5522. Buffalo Mountain supports Hazen. And Sperry Lawn Care, 745-8336. When others can't cut it, they can. HCTV Channel 1080 on your dial, streaming worldwide and archived at www.hctv.us. Once again, it's Tuesday, May 25th. You're watching the Hazen Union Wildcats taking on the People's Academy Wolves. These teams, once again, if you didn't catch at the top of the broadcast, have split games at PA this season. I have. 4-0 and 7-0. Hazen won the first one on a one-hitter. Hazen uh, PA won the second one on a no-hitter. And uh, so let's see what's happening. It's one out now. So. It is. You know, like we said, really excellent pitching on both sides. Bernard able to work his way out of trouble in the top half. And great defense. Yes, very good defense. I'm going to praise Tyler Rebard again one more time. As, yeah. You know, a lot of times, like I said, on his throw to third, a lot of times you're just going to scoop that up and go to first and get the sure out. But he decides to go the hard way to third, and it pays so off. Call, yep. And a lot of times the runner who is going to third in that aspect is going to you know, maybe take a step and go back to second, so they have to throw to first right. and not give them an option to go to third there because he didn't have to run. And you know, going home right there, you know, the runner bolted for home thinking Rivard was probably going to throw right. you know, to first. Throw to first. Rivard's like, nope, I'm going to get you at the plate. 
And he sure did. A little bit of a gamble, a sure little bit of aggressiveness. You know, hey, if you, if you score the run, you score the run. And yeah. That's it. And if you get you the know, out well, you may you tried a nice aggressive play and you know I mean they were you know you had a nice you had a great defensive play that, that got you yeah, so you know they're thinking we're winning why not you know exactly got nothing to lose everything to gain as we see a state trooper vehicle over there I believe that is Opie Upson's the rig, trooper probably. if I had to is hazard, the trooper in attendance I don't know if he's down there I think he yeah he is right there all right Opie Upson is here the trooper I'm gonna assume that's probably his rig then so you know I drive it in before the game and I was like if we get a home playoff game which I think we will and Opie's here I'm gonna bust out the first verse of the trooper all right as there's a pitch Ooh, low strike call there for Alexson to Andrew the Mahler Menard who we know has got some big power at the plate. Yes, he does. Andrew makes solid contact, hits he well. Really does, but that comes from his hockey strength too. Slap shots right out yes. there. Slap shots, wrist shots, whatever it is. They are gonna call that a ball. They said that. They say check the swing, didn't yep. get around. They're gonna say that Menard held up. They're gonna say that Menard held up. Now, 1-1 one, one count from Alexson. Here's the pitch. That is fouled to the backstop. You see hard contact there oh. to the backstop. I thought there was going to be an extra hole in that uh, fence. Menard swinging for the fences on that one. He sure, well, I mean, he did hit a fence. Yeah. One and two now to Menard from Alexson. And the Seagulls pick up there over the Hazen faithful. And that is going to be a ball. Looked pretty good to me. I thought it looked good, too. And it's going to be 2-2 two -two now to Andrew Menard. Although I'm used to it because that was, you know, type of baseball. That's just baseball chance. Mm -hmm. That is outside, and it is going to fill up the count now to Andrew Menard. Three and two. Menard got to protect here. Anything close. He's got to put the bat on it. Alexson kicks and fires. And that is ripped into left field. A base hit for Andrew the Mahler Menard. Great patience by Andrew on that at bat. Just to wait out and get the pitch he wanted. Slap it into left field. He's on first base. Was. He made Alexson work and made Alexson pitch to him. Made it happen. As now, Wyatt Flanders, who is hitting in place of James Montgomery, is going to stand in. Montgomery is just playing defense today, and Flanders is going to hit in his spot. Wyatt Flanders. First pitch from Alex, and Flanders shows bunt, pops it foul over behind first. As you hear uh, somebody say over by the Hazen uh, Wildcat bench, and it's true. Got to have those down. Mm -hmm. Because a bunt lands, you want to keep it on the ground. We saw, some, we saw some nice bunting in that Blue Mountain game. We by really Blue did. Mountain. Oh. Really did. Hayes and defense was caught off guard by that. Another one. That is a perfect. Like that, yeah. That's a good bunt. You know, that's a bunt for sacrifice, not a bunt for a hit. Yep. So, you know, that's exactly what you want to do in Advance that situation to bunt and move the runner up. As Fenton Meyer is going to stand in now. I can't remember if I've seen Fenton yet this year. I think he played against Blue Mountain on Saturday. Maybe Saturday. he played in one of them, I think. I don't remember calling his name, but. Uh... He might have played in the second game. <laughs> there is a strike to Fenton Meyer. Love to see the umps being a little animated. That's the of word course. I was looking for earlier. Animated, yes. The umps you found it, Lance. Animated behind the plate. Pitch from Alexson. Ooh, inside, and it does drill Fenton Meyer. And Alexson is going to have to contend with two runners as he hits a batter and allowed a hit to Menard. Just one out now. Pitching coach now. Ian Lamphere going to come out for the People's Academy Wolves. Talk to Ben Alexson, try and calm him down a little bit.
trying to think, uh, James, is that the second or third batter he's hit? I mean, we know we got Lyle because he got him right on. That is right the, second. Top of the helmet. Second, second he, I believe. He didn't clip anybody else? I don't think so. I thought there was one other person, but maybe it was on the other side. I'm maybe we'll sure. know when they come up again and we'll hear the name and then we'll be like, oh, he got hit. No, I'm pretty sure it was just Lyle. Beat him right in the head. Yeah. Luckily, that wasn't a fastball. That might have hurt. Exactly. I got hit in the head with one pitch in my entire baseball career. That's why I never played baseball. In fifth grade baseball. As Tyson Davison's going to stand in now, we know he's a pretty good hitter at the plate. He play. is. He's got some good speed, too. Might not hit for power, but he, you know. If he can shoot one in the gap. And swing and a miss now. First pitch strike by Ben Allickson. Tyson looking hit all the way on that one. He sure was. Tyson knew as soon as it left his hands, he's like, I am swinging. I don't care what it is, I'm swinging. Oh, one one pitch. Oh, Tyson Davison with a Beautiful beauty bunt. of a bunt. Nowhere to Beautiful go. Beautiful bunt down the third base wow. line. Third baseman Derek Baxter for the PA Wolves was playing back, and Tyson said, how about that? Just a beautiful bunt, and great now, at bat. Faked him out with a big swing on the first sure one, did. and it just squares up and bunts on that one. And now the, base, Textbook. And now the bases are drunk for one of the most dangerous hitters of them all. That's right. Ethan, the shopper, the shopper. Shoplin. Shoplin, we saw him in a situation like this on Saturday, driving a ton of runs. Shoplin, a great chance to tie this game, if not some more. Base hit could bring in two. First pitch from Allison, as it is fouled away. Well, Lance, I think it's safe to say it's not going to be another no-hitter for Ben Allickson today. No. As it is. No, and Andrew uh, spoiled his no-hitter bid early, too. Yeah. So <laughs> We got that right. Pressure's off right yeah. <laughs> now. Both pitchers. Now yeah. just settle in and pitch, you know. Oh, one fouled hard to the Hudson soccer field. That one's going to get all the way over there. Off the bat, a little shopper. There was Derek Richardson. All right. One more, Ben. Oh, oh two. two. One out. Oh, two now Bottom to the, the dangerous. Second. The shopper. The shopper. And fouled off, staying alive, little shopper. The shopper. That is exactly what you want to do in that situation. Make have, to, pitch. have to foul off right there. Another 0-2 from Allickson on the way. And Shoplin fouls another one off. Oh, off the flagpole over there. I don't think I've seen that one happen before. I haven't yet. And Little Shopper. First time for everything. And of course, it would happen to none better than the Shopper. And there's a hit on the ground to short. Ooh, Chandler Follinsby off his chest. And go. there is going to be a base knock and an RBI for a little shopper. A run is going to come in as you see the Hazen bench is fired up and so is the Fires up the Andrew crowd. Menard. Fires up the crowd as well. And Hometown now and faithful, happy to see Ethan doing something out here on senior night. Oh, absolutely. Tie little shopper game. knocking in a run. Base is still loaded. Base is still loaded with one down. Alex in a jam now. T -Rex as at another the plate. Yes, another dangerous hitter. And T Rex, Tyler Revard. So T Rex get a good bat on that first at bat. Yep. Pitch from Allickson. That is low for a ball. Another pitch that looked pretty good. You see Aaron Hill in attendance today as well. To see his uh, player, Jason Chaplin. Pitch from Allickson, that's in there for a strike. 1-1 one, one count now to Rivard. One down, bottom of the second. 1-1 one, one game. Cats got the bases loaded. They sure do. Meyer at third, uh, Davison at second, Shopland at first. That is hit hard, oh, crazy. Almost made the play. Cats are going to score two. They and Rebart is going to bring in two, and the Hazen Wildcats stay fired up. Hard hit over there to first. Frazee tried to put a mid on it, but that is such a tough play to make. 
When that thing is coming at you that fast, that is hard to put a glove on. The last two have been, I mean, Ethan hit that absolute rocket to Follinsby. And that I thought one was that was taking Freezy's glove off over there at first. That was a rocket. And now another dangerous hitter to stand in, in the butcher, the baker, the home run maker, Jaden Baker. See? I won't call, him, won't call him Isaiah today. Revard at first, Chopper at third. As the bunt game has worked out well for the Wildcats today, as Baker tries to lay one down, won't do it. One one count now, or oh one count now to Baker. You know, Frazee is a good defensive first baseman too, but you just can't do nothing about no. a ball hit that hard. I mean, that thing shot out of a bazooka. It sure did. <laughs> oh and two now to Jaden Baker. Got to protect. Spirited strike call by the home run, home the plate. home plate umpire. Home run umpire? Yeah, the home run umpire, the home plate umpire. Yeah. That's why I got you here, James. <laughs> hey, I've, Keep me straight. I've done it, Lance. As that is low for a ball. I think I've seen that same pitch called the strike today, too. So I guess it just depends how good Levin frames it behind home plate. Because framing it, sometimes the ball can be a strike just by the way the catcher frames it. Oh, Revard's going to go before Alex it even throws, and he is safe. Shoplin's going home. Oh, and he is Shoplin out is at home. Out. Shoplin on a bang, bang play at the plate, and he is called out. Tyler kind of lulled him to sleep over there. I thought, he might have got the second the base. I thought he might have got the hand in at home plate, yeah. but good tag there by Levin behind yeah, the plate. Nice play by the defense. Double steal. Very, Double he steal. was stealing home. He might have been the first Wildcat to ever steal home. As now with two outs, but a runner in scoring position now as Revard moves up. Nice decision to go there by the Wildcats. You see aggressive base running is their forte. That's right. And that is fouled back. Once again, just a great defensive play by PA. There's another hole in that pole over behind home plate. <laughs> another rocket foul. Tell you, these kids hit a lot harder than I can, Lance. <laughs> Tell you that. Hell, I was lucky if I hit one in the outfield. I was lucky if I hit one. <laughs> I've been there too. I'm your, I'm your basic Charlie Brown of baseball. And Jaden tried to go, or tried drop. to hold yeah. it up. Drop third strike though. As the Wildcats push across three, uh, two in the inning to give them a 3-1 lead. After two, Wildcats got the bats working. Knocked Alexson around a little bit on the mound. Rare to come, see. Come from behind, take the lead right now. Rare to see that from Alexson on the hill too. Give up that many hits. Like I said, just some hard, hard balls to field for the PA, PA Wolves, too. Definitely Ethan's and uh, Tyler's were just Ethan, oh, rocket. rocket shots. Take a battery break. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Well, Augie Levin to stand in now for the People's Academy Wolves. The Mauler trots back out to the mound. He does with some run support now from his Hazen counterparts. See if he can hold the lead. I still, you know, I still respect the decision by uh, Spencer Howard to send Shopland and Revard. Because oh, yeah. you knew chances are you were going to get one out of the two. They just so happened to get their one, at f the one coming home. Pitch from Menard. Levin smokes it on the ground. Revard gets low, scoops it up. He fires to first, and he's out. Nice, strong throw there by Revard. That's the Revard we need to see. We've, we've seen two great plays at home on both sides of the ball, really. Um, you know, when Tyler came home on, on the PA well, runner and, and then the when the third PA early. came home, yep. you know, on, on in, Ethan. So and both the teams, one to third earlier by Revert, right. too. But, I mean, as far as coming home oh, to, yeah. save, to save runs, we've seen yeah. it on both sides of the ball now. Both great yeah. defensive plays by as both teams. The senior star, Landon Doobie, for the People's Academy Wolves. That ball is hit hard. Revert all on. Derek Jeter dives. High throw. And that is going to be overthrown. Great effort by Tyler Revard, though. So hard to throw the ball Make when the you're catch. on the ground. Yeah. Trust me, I've seen it happen. Tyler giving it his all. He is. I th Revard might be an early player of the game contender for me. Revard is making plays defensively. He's got hits. He stole a base. I mean, what the heck? It's your last home, you know, home regular season game. You're playing an our tribal. You might as well let it all hang out. Right? You're Do playing, it all. You're playing your arch nemesis, your Route 15 rival. Yeah. Might as well give it what you got, right? Have a little fun out there, too. Yeah, and have some fun. Menard with the pitch. 
That is going to be inside to Baxter. 1-0 now to Baxter. Menard kicks and fires. That is going to be low. Out of play. It's out of play. Unfortunately, Montgomery can't put a mid on that one. One there for you, Derek. Montgomery seemed to whip that thing back to for, uh, back to the pitcher. A little frustrated with himself. Oh, well, you know, he might have to work out the kinks again, kind of get back into his rhythm back behind the plate. It's exactly. been a while since he's been back there. Work off a little rust. 2-0 to Baxter. Pitch from Menard is low, and that is ball three, so it's going to be a 3-0 count. Chances are he's taken here. Runner on third for the Wolves. One out, top of the third. There's the strike on the corner by Menard. That looked outside. It did. Generous call by the home plate umpire. But we will take it. That is hit high to right field. Runner going to tag. Fenton Meyer is going to put it away. Runner tags, and he is going to get in standing as it's now a 3-2 ball game for the Hazel Wildcats. Doobie tags and scores from home, but Derek Baxter is going to get the sack fly in an RBI. So fun to say. Don't get to say it often, but occasionally you get it in there. As Hayden Frazee, the People's Academy first baseman, stands in. Excellent pitcher, too. I'm surprised they haven't sent him to the mound at all. Go, Hayden. Hayden's a good pitcher, good first baseman. Hits the ball well. Frazee fouls it back. Behind home plate. I remember the first varsity game I saw Frazee pitch was against 232, a very good D2 school, and he pitched a beauty. Mm. O oh, one now to Frazee. Menard, nobody on base, doesn't have anybody to worry about now. He can just pitch. Kicks and fires. That ball is hit high out to center. A little shopper. He is going to put it away. himself under it, makes the catch. Third out. Can of corn out there in center field for a little shopper. I wondered if that was truly a can of corn. Sure was. Okay. I'll Saw trust the your judgment. of corn coming down, too. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Yeah. So Hazen escapes uh, that one, still clinging to a lead, could give up been, one run. It could have been worse. Could have been far worse. The Maulers acclimating himself okay there on the You know, that's today. one thing we have seen, you know, especially from Andrew on the mound this year. He, when yeah. he gets in trouble, he works his way out of it. As Alex has struggled a bit last inning on the mound for the Wolves, but... We'll see if Hazen the Hazen bats keep going or? 3-2 lead, and I believe this is the bottom of the third. Sure so is. I don't think the scoreboard is quite caught up with us yet. As always. Take a second, second now to whip off these sponsors. Hazen Varsity Baseball playing People's Academy Tuesday, May 25th, 2021. We are sponsored by Buffalo Mountain Power Sports, 472-5522. Buffalo Mountain supports Hazen. And Sperry Lawn Care, 745-8336. When others can't cut it, they can. On your cable dial, HCTV channel 1080, and streaming worldwide at www.hctv.us. Sperry Lawn Care and Buffalo Mountain Power Sports have been with us the entire baseball season, so we want to give a big shout-out and thank they you to have. them for sponsoring yeah. HCTV and Hazen Varsity Boys Baseball. Yeah. Hopefully they will tag along with us for basketball. Though uh, Morse Insurance, that's Liz's uh, favorite sponsor for us to read during basketball season insurance? for Griff and I. Because it says they've been around since 1892, and Griff and I always say that's uh, maybe almost as old as Liz. He said he has to take out the calculator on that one. <laughs> that's cold. That's cold. Griff, we're talking about you a lot today. Yeah, we all mean with, well. Uh, and once again, with the, where the uh, Hazen is parked in the standings, we're thinking uh, home playoff action. At least one game. At least one game. We're talking to the AD John uh, Sperry before the game. I think no matter what, they'll get one game, one home playoff game. And There's we just have to hope for good weather. Oof, block off the chest by Levin, and that is going to scoot out of play. First pitch to Rooney is a ball from Alexson. A 
a one pitch, swing and a miss by Rooney. Good pitch there by Alexson. Rooney a little frustrated that he didn't get a piece of that one. A little bit low too though. I was gonna say, he kind of dug down low for that one. I was wondering where I was hearing that from. As that Hitting ball, off the tee. It's gonna be oh, and who else would be doing that but Jaden Baker. Yep. As that ball is low and outside. Doing his best, Kirk Gibson over there, taking a few extra swings off the top of the tee. Sure is. And he throws the bat. He's like, I'm done with it. The 2-1 now from Alexson. That ball is hit foul over by first. 2-2 two -two count now to Lyle Rooney. Got plunked in his first at bat. I believe it was his first at bat. Yes. Where he got plunked in the head. Right off the top of the That's helmet. That's another fun word to say during baseball. Good baseball team. Plunked. Although I never liked getting plunked, I can tell you that. No. 2-2 two -two from Alexson. That is going to be low, and the count is full. Alexson right now is having some location troubles on the mound. I was say, the way he started, he was really, really sharp. He was. Let's see what happens here. And that is going to be low ball four. So Rooney yet to get a hit here. Technically with no at-bats. Yeah. He has no at-bats though, technically. Okay. Because a hit, a hit by pitch and a walk does not count as an AB. Ah. So he's zero for zero still. 13, this is uh, Asia? Asia? Yep. Asia, we know he can hit. Good defensive first baseman too. Snap throw over to first, won't get him. Keeping Lyle honest over there. Sure is. Lyle we know can run. As can most of these Hazen Wildcats. Now the first pitch to Gould. Gould shows bunt, doesn't get it. That kicks to the backstop and Rooney is gonna take a turn for third, but he's gonna make the smart decision to stay there at second. Stolen base for Rooney. Hazen's got a runner in scoring position. With no outs here in the bottom of the third. Beat me to it, Lance. Here comes the 1-0 pitch now to Gould. Gould shows bunt again. That's coming right back at us. Right over, right over Liz. That almost took Liz out. There's Liz with quick feet there to get out of the way. <laughs> two, <laughs> two, one now. I was gonna try and barehand it, but I didn't want to embarrass myself. I almost thought I was gonna have to reach over there. I, I was ready to step out of your way, James. Might have broke my hand, but to protect Liz, it'll be worth it. Because <laughs> we need Liz. This would not be possible if Liz wasn't here. We'd be in trouble. Griff would have to come out of retirement. Swing, swing and a miss, hard swing by Gould. There you go, Ben. I shouldn't really say Griff's in retirement. He's in camera retirement right now. Camera working your time until He'll be back. Yeah, for yeah, basketball, he'll be back. He'll have a mic back on for basketball, too, hopefully. And wave and a miss, and Gould strikes out. Alexson picks up a much-needed strikeout. And up comes the mauler. Andrew Menard. Man, that just sounds fierce when he steps up to the plate. It sounds the, intimidating. The mauler. The mauler. Andrew Menard. Well, the runner at second, one down. Shot deep enough in the outfield could bring home. He's Rooney. looking to build on that lead. Good first pitch for a strike by Ben Allickson. Oh, one pitch from Allickson. Menard shows bunt right back to the pitcher. And it's going to be a good sacrifice bunt there. It's going to move Rooney up to third, but there is two outs. Also, never a good idea to bunt with two outs. As Wyatt Flanders is going to step in now, try and knock in Rooney from third. First pitch to Flanders is going to be a ball. Although the sump has been pretty consistent back there. Yes. 
Yes, we've questioned a couple, but I'm not going to throw on a mask and a chest protector and go down and try and refute anything. Right? Wouldn't bother me that much. I'd be scared to death. Pitch from Alex, and that's going to be high ball, too. Elevated pitch there. Two zero. Two Flanders. Here's the two zero pitch. That's going to be a strike. Two and one now to Wyatt Flanders, who normally plays outfield, but is DHing for James Montgomery today. That's right, James behind the plate, but not swinging the bat today. Yep. Wyatt stepping in for him. And pitch from Alexson, swing and a miss. 2-2 two, two now to Flanders. Alexson gonna try and work his way out of a little trouble. Two-two pitch from Alexson. That is called strike three, late call by the umpire. I'm gonna say, not too animated either on that one. He was not. Backwards K for Flanders. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Alexson to end the inning. And uh, gets himself out of a little bit of a mini jam. You know, yep. he had Lyle over there on third, so. He did, but, uh, you know, two much-needed strikeouts to end the inning there for exactly. uh, Ben Alexson. So Hazen, once again, with one more game um, this Thursday away at Spalding, and that will close out their regular season. The Spalding Crimson Tide. Yes. D2 school. Um, or, and, uh, yep. Sometimes D1, depending yeah, on the sport. Yeah, I was going to say, they sometimes they're D1. Depends on the um, sport. And then we await, uh, you know, of course, seedings and matchups and everything for the playoffs. But and hopefully, I think it will have a home playoff game. And hopefully, Lance and I will be back here on the call with Liz on camera. Unless, of course, PA has a game of their own, same time, different location, then what will you do, James? Where will your allegiance lie? Are you going to be here with me? Or are you going to be watching your PA Wolves, your alma mater? That is that's, that's actually the a tough question, Lance. Yeah. I actually was yeah. bouncing that idea around. He's hedging. My, that, that idea was actually bouncing around in my head. I was like, well, <laughs> what if PA has a home playoff game the same day? What if it's the last chance I get to see my boys play? True, but, uh, very true. Yeah. So I guess that is uh, you, TBD. A <laughs> <laughs> game time decision. That is going to be, yes, Lance, that is going to be a game day decision. Well, Whether I, I will be here or if PA has a game at the same time, if I will be there. At, uh, well, we don't really have a name for our field, but I like to call it the uh, Joe Yando Field. Beautiful baseball field down there at mm -hmm. People's Academy. Yes, I don't know is. if you've ever seen it. Yes. In my opinion, I mean, I might be a little biased, but. That might be the nice field, nicest field in the state, in my opinion. Can't beat the view from there, either. Beautiful red dirt. I could go on and on, but I'll stop. <laughs> I'll just say two words. Hudson Fields. As George Thompson stands in. That Whoa, is shot. ripped up the middle off the bat of George Thompson. Almost First pitch by Menard, and he was swinging. Almost took Andrew's head off. Did. That is just right up the middle. Classic base hit there, right up the middle for a knock. And I'll tell you, speaking of that, uh, a player with, with ties to the general area here, I, I can't remember exactly where he lives. Uh, I know, did he play soccer for Hazen, I think? Chandler Follinsby to stand in now for the Wolves. Let me get to the story after we see what Chandler does. Menard now. He'll kick and deal. That ball is hit hard right past Revard at shortstop. So Follinsby is going to be on the board with a base hit. Follinsby, good hitter, good defensive player. There was a player, I want to say he's he's played some Hazen sports before. I think he's from the area for St. Jay who got hit. He's a pitcher. First name is Arlo. I can't think of his last name. Aldrich. Aldrich. Uh, pitcher for St. Jay Academy. Um, threw a pitch and got hit. Jack Hahn uh, stands in. Broke his uh, orbital bone around his eye socket. Seriously concussed, um, but uh, doing okay. That, you know, we wish him the best. Yeah. yeah. There was a... Uh, Ball outside. Story on him in the Caledonian a few days ago. To Lund. So, <laughs> we see Andrew able to get the glove up and uh, yep. get that ball over him. 1-0 from Menard. That is a big time to center. Shopper. Shopland arranges back. Nice, nice play oh, nice by play. Shopland out there in center. The Shopper. 
Beautiful Little defensive play by the Shopper. The Shopper does it all. He scoops him out behind the plate. He runs him down in center. He knocks him in. Does it all. If your last name's Shoplin, there ain't a darn thing you can't do. I thought it was going to get by him. I did too. But that's when, you know, you know never he, count out a Shoplin. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's tall. He's got made the glove nice, up and made, made, a, real made a great nice play. Yeah, made a great catch. Runners ben, at the corner for the Wolves. Ben Allison stands in now for the People's Academy Wolves. Fallensby runs. He's not going to have to contend with a throw. So Montgomery's got to dig that one out of the dirt. Two for you, Ben. Allison has got two on, one out. One zero pitch from Menard. That is hit hard on the ground to third. Oh, underneath Lyle. We've had a Buckner on both sides. They're going to send Fallensby. Throw to the plate, and Fallensby is going to be hosed at the plate. Nice play. They do there. get one run, though, to tie it up. Who do we got playing in left today? That's Jaden, right? That is Jaden Baker out there in left. Great Heck throw. of a throw. Didn't Great throw by Jaden to Montgomery to get that. Lyle went out for the cutoff, yeah. and Jaden's like, shh, I don't need it. But uh, rare to see the ball go under Lyle like that. Yeah, uh, very. Took, took a slightly funny hop, it looked like. But very uh, rare. By him. That's twice today, actually, that the ball's yeah. taken a funny hop, and Rooney struggled with it over there at third. See, so he pounds the mitt. Two outs now, 3-3. Three, three. Run came in. High ball one to Lanfear. You know, good throw by Baker to get Follinsby at the plate. Follinsby, I was surprised to see uh, thir uh, head coach Keith Woodland send him in motion there. I thought... Might be a good idea for him to hold up. But. That ball is hit hard. Ooh, Menard dives off the mound. Tough hop to Davison. Throw to first. Close play, and they got him. Tyson kind of bobbled around playing. Uh, Menard is going to get out of the inning with only one run. Play a little bit of hot potato out there for Tyson, but he managed yep. to corral it in, make the throw over to first. Gold gets the play. Yeah, 3-3. Three, three. Wolves back. Tie game. As we suspected this to be a good game, Lance. Wolves back to the bottom of the fourth. This is everything you want in a rivalry game. You got great defense, great offense, some hitting, some playing, yep. some mistakes. You, you want know, the sponsors, Lance? Kinda, these are all the things that make up the game, and I will read off the sponsors. This. You're watching Hazen Boys Varsity Baseball Action against the People's Academy Wolves on Tuesday, May 25th, 2021. Sponsor today, Buffalo Mountain Power Sports, 472-5522, Buffalo Mountain Sports Hazen, and Sperry Lawn Care, 745-8336, when others can't cut it. Sperry's can. HCTV channel 1080 on your local cable dial and streaming worldwide and archived at www.hctv.us. You think about it, James. Worldwide means worldwide. worldwide. I mean, there is probably people in China that tune into our games. I have no doubt. Of, no, there's not a doubt in my mind that there are people over there. Liz on camera, of course. Of course. Can't forget Liz. I said, I referred to her as cameraman, best camera woman this side of the Mississippi. Just a camera person for Cam it all. Camera person, yeah. Camera I, just, camera I, just camera go, I just go Liz on camera. Tech Says it guru. All. Liz over there. That's right. <laughs> Does the laptop during basketball season. Phenomenal job at that. A lot of buttons to press, very fast paced to keep mm -hmm. up with the score and the uh, clock and all that stuff. On some nights, indeed. Like when PA's in town, normally. Kind of a rough year for my Wolves this year. Won't get into that, though. I don't want to talk about that, huh? We both lost okay. to the same team in the playoffs. That's so. true, yeah. I was yeah. really hoping PA was going to pull that one out against Enosburg so they would have to come here. Kid made a whale of a shot at he the did. end there. To, uh, I st I've rewatched that play many times and still can't believe he hit that shot. I've seen it on TV, but I've never been there live to witness, I mean, much less make the call on it. Um, I mean, he threw that thing up and banked it in. Yeah. Who made the call that day? Was that Griff? Uh, no, that was me. Oh, it was you? Yeah, it was me. Was Griff there? Uh, Griff was there, yes. So I you believe, and Griff made it. And I believe Liz was there. Were you there, Liz? I think you were there, weren't you? Boys, boys <laughs> playoff game against Enosburg when the kid threw up the three-pointer to beat us there in a split second. I want to say you were there. I think that was one time I couldn't That's right. Leaf. Leaf was doing tech that day. Who do we have standing in, James? Uh, Fentonmeyer. All right. High ball from Alexson. Fentonmeyer got on his first up, right, by, yep. with a hit. Hit by pitch. 
I was gonna say uh, legendary Leaf Goldberg, but that's your nickname, so I'll think of another one for Leaf. One zero now. One one to Meyer. Here comes the one one from Alexson. That is hit hard down the third base line. Frazee is going to put a glove on it. Let's play, it. I thought that was on the ground, but apparently it was in the air, and Frazee got the glove on it. Good job by Frazee over there to get real low and put the mid on it. As Tyson Davison is going to stand in now to face Alexson. Jason Davis, an excellent player for the Hazen Wildcats. The Hazen faithful picks up over there. That ball is rocketed almost in the ankle, and Follinsby can't quite scoop it up over there. Nice running effort by Follinsby. Same thing happened to Rivard earlier. All right, James, I'm going to ask potentially an incredibly stupid question, but this shows my total lack of knowledge when it comes to baseball. But I, I've got to ask this, because when Meyer hit the ball, I saw the chalk fly up. So I think it was on the ground. Now, in that case, can the first baseman field the ball and touch the base and yes. the runner is out? Yes. I think that's what happened. Did he touch the base? Oh, I he was he right did. on the base. Okay, yeah. I didn't see it. I, was I say. believe that's what happened. I was going to say, there's no way that ball was in the air. No, he was standing, he was, he was crouched down right beside the base, made the catch, and I saw him put his okay. mitt on the base. That is, okay, so that's what happened. Then. Okay. If he but you can it on do the that. ground and he puts the ball, his glove on the base, okay. it's out. As long as the ball's in his glove. Right. Okay. Another snap throw to first. He's safe both times. Allison is going to double check on Davison over there at first, who he knows has good speed. And the Cats have been known to be a little aggressive. We forgot, aggressive. To, we forgot to mention the shopper. Stands in for Made the Wildcats. a great defensive play. He did. Drove in a couple runs in his first at bat. Or at least one. He drove in one. There goes Davidson. Davidson there. Good throw by him. Levin behind the plate. And, he, and Davidson Ooh, is hosed. Let him beautifully. As I like to say, he is hosed over there at second. Let him, catcher let him beautifully. Out he there did. That is the, the exact throw you want to make. Right towards, now, right towards the first base side. Two outs with nobody on. The shopper is going to try and put something in play. All mountain geese right there. Might as well swing away. <laughs> Pitch now from Allison. That is ripped out to center field. Lund is going to range back and put it away out there in center. Solid contact. Not very, quite the contact we saw him get in the Blue Mountain game, but that was solid, solid but Lund may, able to make the catch. Yeah, you know, Lund, similar play to what uh, Shopman had to made, do yeah. in the, uh, earlier in the game. So that'll move us to the, uh, is this, have, they, have they changed the scoreboard clock already? Is, it, is this the top of the top fifth? Of the fifth? It top is the top of the fifth? Okay. We could be scoreboard here. catching up with us quickly here. It is. We could be here for a while if the game stays tied. We know what these two teams are capable of as the Mahler is going to continue to pitch. We have the power. Sure do. To be here. Don't know who sings that song, but I've got the power. I've heard it many times. Can't remember who sings it. I should know it. I've oh. played that song a billion times. I guess I, I am DJ. wrong. Revard is going to come in Revard's and relief now. Revard, we're hoping, uh, like we said, no offense here, but. Uh, Open Revar can pitch a little bit better than he did on uh, Saturday. Yeah, he did not look good in the first few innings of that Blue Mountain but game. But maybe he's more of a reliever than a starter. That's right. Because every time we've seen him come in out of relief, he's thrown pretty well. And that's what's happening right now. <coughs> Revar throws very, very hard on the mound. Hits the ball hard, too. Good at shortstop, but that is where Rooney's going to go and Menard's going to head to third. So Menard done after four good innings of work on the mound. Leaves with the game tied 3-3. Sure does. Win on the line. No decision right now. Win or loss on the line, actually. Right now. As of this moment. As of this moment. Win or loss on the, on the mound. 
could go to Andrew Menard. If the pitcher leaves in a tie game, if your team ends up winning, your pitcher gets the win. But if you leave in a tie game and your team ends up losing, despite your efforts, you still could get tagged with the loss. Oh, okay. Depending on what happens. Unless Rivard gives up like seven runs. Then the loss will go to Rivard. As Levin is Okay, I did have it right. The group that did we I've got the power was Snap. Snap. Yeah. As Augie Levin. Early 90s hits. Augie Levin's going to stand in now to face Tyler Rivard, the hard throwing right hander. He fires a strike in there. Good pitch by Rivard. Rivard hoping to take out his frustrations today on the mound. Back-to-back -back strikes by Rivard. Who do we have? Uh, who do we have playing at short now? That is Lyle Rooney moves over to short, and not the Mahler goes to third. Okay. Yep. Rivard to the mound, looking sharp in his first couple of pitches here. Yep. Ooh, inside, blocked by Montgomery. Good block. Been keeping James busy back there behind the plate today. Sure has, and not me. <laughs> <laughs> Rivard's going to kick and fire. That is hit hard on the ground. Rooney going to scoop it up at short. He fires to Gould at first. Nice play. He's out. We saw Lyle struggle with a couple of balls over there at third, but great play on that one at short. I think Lyle is naturally a shortstop. I think Lyle is naturally a shortstop, so that comes easier for him to make that play. As Landon Doobie stands in now. Excellent athlete for the People's Academy Wolves. Fantastic soccer player was part of the state champion People's Academy Wolves soccer team this past fall. That is low for ball one. A couple years ago, I remember playing a game here. Quarterfinals, my senior year. Yes, I remember the game as well. That is rocketed to left. And Baker is going to put that away. No problem out there for Jaden Baker. We know him excellent in the outfield. When you got to contend with little shot, when you got to contend with the shopper and Jaden Baker in the outfield, that might not be that great of a day for you at the plate. Because you can hit that thing hard, but they're going to get there. That's like trying to hit one past Griffey. Yes, I just referred to little shopper and Jaden Baker as Ken Griffey. <laughs> Pitch now. To There's the animated call. Baxter is a strike. There's the animated, animated umpire that we like. Two outs for the Hazen Wildcats. That is hit hard. Davison, ooh, he's going to play that one off his chest. That had to hurt. Quick throw to Gould, and he got him. Way to is stick with it. Three up, three down? Three up, three down. One, two, three inning for Tyler Rebard. All right, James, you know what? Have you, did you read the sponsors while we're out? No, I did not. Can I, can I jump back in here just to get my feet back under me and read our sponsors here? Of course, Lance. That's what, we're in what? Uh, bottom of the fifth. Bottom of the fifth, score tied 3-3. Uh, watching Hazen Boys Varsity Baseball playing the People's Academy Wolves. This is Tuesday, May 25th. Our sponsors, Buffalo Mountain Power Sports, 472-5522, Buffalo Mountain Sports Hazen, and Sperry Lawn Care, 745-8336. When others can't cut it, Sperry's can. I had to step away from them. My parents had called me twice. And, uh, Must have been important. Uh, my mom thought that we were done with the game. <laughs> Baseball's so, a long game. That's what I told her. She said, well, when are you going to be done? I said, it's the end of the game. <laughs> as T-Rex, Tyler Rebard. Oh, uh, God bless him. Right? As a Rebard steps in to face Alexson, first pitch. That is going to be low on the dirt. Ball one to Rebard. Rebard now the pitcher. And pitched well in that inning. Sure three did. up, three down inning for. One, two, three. Rebard. He took care of the PA Wolves awful quick. She said this one might go to extras today, Lance. Very well could. Score tied right now. What do you say, Tyree? 1-0 to Rebard. That is hit hard over towards right. Take the right and that is going to drop. Rebard is going to dig. Sorry. He's headed to second. He dives in safe and a two-bagger to start the inning for Tyler Rivard. Not sure if the right fielder lost it in the sun or the glare or what. That's Just what I think happened. Trust me, I've played right field. It ain't easy out there. Especially when the sun's shining like this, it ain't easy to be a right fielder. So, you know, that drops in in front of Alex Lamphere out there in right. 
the butcher, the baker, the home run maker right here. Jaden Baker to stand in. His brother Isaiah is in attendance. Another bunt there by Jaden Baker. Oh, he waited. Rivard waited for him to throw to first to know he was going there, and then he went. Smart base runner there by Rivard. It's Rivard at third, one out. And with a play like that, we won't get any serious helmet flip from Jaden. He's happy nope. with himself on that one. Yep. As he moves up Just the runner, does exactly what he needed to yep. do. With one out. And Lyle Rooney to step to the plate. Jaden, one of the more entertaining Helmet flippers when things don't go the way he Entertaining wants. Entertaining athlete to just watch. Him Absolutely. Lyle Rooney. Lyle Rooney hit hard. Shopper. Run comes Reverge home. Reverge coming home all the way. Throw to the plate. And the Wildcats are up four to three. Rooney goes to third. Second. Second. My bad. Jeez, rookie mistake by me there. Rooney gets into second standing. Now we saw the we saw the catcher playing, you know, when the throw came in, he dropped the ball. He was trying to get the ball. Tyler went back to pick up the bat. Looked like he kind of got in the way. Catcher appealed to the umpire for an interference call. Didn't get it. Did not get it, but he gets the RBI out of it. 4-3. Rooney at second. Asia Gould to stand in. Pitch from Allison. That is just a ball. Look good to me. PA manager must have been okay with the call. He didn't come out and appeal either. Yeah, PA coach, Keith Woodland. Well, that, Surprised you know, to not see him argue on that one. Actually. Yeah, I mean, that's what it looked like to me. You know, I know Spencer would have on the other side. I'll tell you that. Absolutely, you know. I, you know, Keith is vocal at times. And another bunt by Gould. Alexson's going to get to that one, no problem, though. Flip it over to first. So with two down, Rooney moves up to third. Cats put one run on the board, looking to put another. They do, and the Mahler, the Mahler we, Menard. We know the Mahler can hit. We sure do. But the Mahler, if I remember right, last time took a mighty swing and then bunted. He but did. you don't bunt with two outs. You don't bunt with two outs or two so strikes. So Mahler's going to be swinging. He is. Which is good to see. He sure is swinging. John Sperry almost makes a whale of a play over there. Foul ground. Seven, I like it already. Head on and drive. You hear Spencer Howard firing up the Mahler from third base. Pitch from Allison in there for a strike. Got a bug on your arm, Lance. Am I gone? Okay. Yep, got it. As it is a one-two count now to Andrew the Mahler Menard. Two outs, smaller swing away on this one. Yep. And he strikes out. Went down swinging, but so, the Cats managed to put one on the board. They do as they got the lead, headed to the top of the sixth. 4-3, your score, everything we thought this game would be. Yep. Very, like we said, you know, very, very entertaining. Good game so far. As expected when these two teams match up in any sport. Clouds have parted, got some sunshine, nice little breeze here. Perfect day for you know, baseball thanks at the to fields. Aaron Hill's uh, stat keeping ability, or like he has books that date way back to like he has every game from oh, like yeah. a long time ago. Um, apparently, this uh, Hazen and PA rivalry dates back to 1912. Really? That's back when this was uh, Hardwick Academy. Mm -hmm. I found that out. Uh, you know, said that oh. in the basketball broadcast when PA came to town a couple years ago. That's pretty cool. Griff was pretty eye opened about it. Mm hmm. So if that goes to show you how long these two have been arch nemesis. Biggest rivalry in Vermont sports, in my opinion. This is like uh, it's like the Red Sox and Yankees. That it is. Sometimes some fireworks start. Although you never really see fights at the high school level. I tell you, if I ever got hit by a pitch and it was intentional, I know where I'd be going, to first base. <laughs> Because most of the guys on the mound could probably beat me up. <laughs> <laughs> Rebard, especially. It's Hayden Frazee, the big bat of the People's Academy Wolves. I'm going to stand in now. What a throw by Montgomery there in warm-ups. Rope down there to second. It was. Hayden Frazee, one of the few lefties we see. He's going to stand in. 
big tall lefty hits hard. Hitting out of the seven hole. Rivard now in his second inning of work. He is going to throw a ball in there on the inside to Hayden Frazee. As that is high for a ball. Two balls, no strikes to Frazee. No outs, top of the sixth. Rivard kicks and fires a strike in there. Good pitch by Tyler Rivard. Big righty throws hard. Maybe see Rooney come in here to close it out. Depending, we may. Anything's possible. Sure is. So Ooh, contact high up shot. the middle. And it's that's going to get by. Just over the head of Rivard who jumped for it. Job, hit it. As like Hayden Frazee is going to get a base hit up the middle. Looked like Tyson and uh, Lyle might have got a little mixed up as to who was going to grab that. They both sort of went for it, then they both sort of held up. And yep. Going to bring a pinch runner to first base, or maybe a courtesy runner. I don't know why Woodland would take Frazee out of the game. So. Going to be a courtesy runner. Chase Newhauser is going to go to first for the People's Wolves. Trying to get a little extra speed on the bases. Here you go, George. As George Thompson steps in now for the People's Wolves. As, uh, Cody Hall walks by. I think Cody's exiting to go to soccer practice. Hi, ball. Cody Hall still playing soccer. Playing spring soccer, yep. Where is he playing that? Uh, over in Cabot. Oh, that's good to hear. Anybody else from Throw around here first. playing with him? Well, you know, I'm trying to think. I haven't, it's just sad to say as a parent, I haven't been to any of his games yet. Um, 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 you're putting me on the spot here, James. Sorry, Lance. Oh, uh, I know uh, Macy Moeller is yep. playing on the team. It's a co-ed team. Yep. I know Macy's pitch. on the team. and. Uh, Seems like there's a couple others, but I cannot. The names escape me. I'm surprised Isaiah Baker's not playing with him. No. Isaiah, I think, really played soccer for fun. Yeah. Yeah, just to kind of stay in shape for basketball. Yep. He was a good soccer player, though. Fantastic soccer player. That is in the dirt. 3-0 and now to George Thompson. From Rivard. There's a strike by Rivard. He needed that one. So no one, two, three inning this inning for Rivard, unfortunately. Pitch from Rivard. That is popped high. Three guys go for it. One of them called for it. Didn't know which one it was, but. You know, I think you got to make that call a little bit earlier, so maybe, you know, that one's in the mint instead of. Mm -hmm. Was close play over there by the dugouts. Territory. You're on it now, George. Heck, if there's a f uh, pop up high enough here, they could run up here and make the catch if they have to. Right in front of us. Yep. And I'd let them. <laughs> I would too. Full count now to George Thompson from Tyler Rivard. Bit of a helmet malfunction for James Montgomery. They're going to grab him a new one. Like we said, good to see Montgomery back behind the plate. Yep. We know he's a good catcher. Well, it was fun to see uh, the shopper back there. Shopper did an admiral job. He sure did. Filling in. But, yeah. What a sweet hot dog bucket hat by Cody, too. <laughs> throw down by Montgomery. Good throw. And he got him at second. Oh, it was a walk. It was a walk, so no <laughs> no out there at second. Oh, uh, okay. It was a walk. I don't know why he was running on a ball 
Well, probably because he thought it could have been a strike too. So, I mean, it makes sense. As Chandler Follinsby, dangerous bat for Reaver to contend with now. Follinsby, I believe, got a hit in his last AB. Pitch, oof. Follinsby chops at it. So we've got runners at first and second, still nobody out. Top of the sixth. Follinsby hits that, that one a ton. But that is going to be, oh, Rooney. Rooney's going to put that away. Rooney's going to range out shallow center. Wynn might have knocked that one down. I thought that yeah. one was going to be out to Shopland. Pretty good breeze blowing in just then. But Rooney over there makes a nice play. You see, since Rooney's moved to shortstop, he's had no trouble. Yep. Lyle like I said, I think he's naturally a shortstop. Yeah. But most shortstops can play third, too, and it's not that. And Rooney's not a shabby fielder by any means. Just a couple bad hops over there, too. Mm -hmm. As Jack Lund is going to stand in now for the People's Academy Wolves. One out on the Revard throw. That is in the dirt. Runner goes into third, standing up. And uh, second base as well. Yep. So now runners in scoring position with one out. First pitch was a ball. Spencer Howard telling Lyle Rooney to come in a little bit. 1-0 pitch from Rebard. Ooh, looked good to me, just a little low though. Pitch from Rebard. Another questionable call behind the plate. Enfield seems to be playing way in. They're not thinking bunt here, are they, James? With three balls and no strikes, I look, wouldn't doubt it. If you look, Tyson and Lyle are both right on it. Tyson's two and steps onto the grass. Far in too, and so yeah, is and you can see them crouched down like they're almost ready. Ball four, couple. Or expecting maybe a sharp grounder. I don't yeah. know. That's a tough one for. That's a tough at bat for Revar. Mm -hmm. I think he threw lost some good a, pitches. Lost a couple strikes there by yeah. the ump. Montgomery on his way to the mound, as are the infielders. They're going to have a little bit of conference here on the mound. Quick pep talk with their pitcher, Rivard, who has got the bases loaded and one down. Open maybe to roll a double play ball here and get out of it. Roll the 4 6 maybe, maybe that's what they were trying to, to, to be able to play. Induce. Yep. I don't know. They were playing bun defense, so I don't really know. That's what had me confused as well. The, you know, you in on the grass, crouched down, ready to spring forward, you know? Yep. Although the Wildcats are still up by one. One down here, top of the sixth. Still anybody's ball game. Pitch from Reva. That one might have been in the dirt. But Reva had last at bat, lost a couple good pitches. Pitch, that one's high by Reva. 2-0. I believe Tyler's dad is the assistant coach. Yes, Joe Rivard. Base is loaded. We saw him walk a couple in against Blue Mountain. That is fouled back. Ooh, thought that was going to be a flagpole finder. Still a dent in it earlier from a little shopper hit it. Thing's still shaking. <laughs> Now two and one to Revert. He'll take the strike anyway he can get it. Ooh, inside. that is high and inside. All three, three one count now. Two Alexson at the plate, if I didn't mention that. Which I don't think I did. And Alexson is gonna hit another one hard foul. Gold thought he was gonna have a beat on it at first. Can't make the play on that one. Full count. Full count now. Big pitch coming from Rivard. Three two from Rivard. That is rocketed foul down the third base line. That was hit hard. Good thing that weren't fair. You're on it, Ben. Would have had at least two runs score. At least. 
I don't Although, know. Jaden might have cut yeah, that yeah, off with, pretty with, quick. With Baker back there. Baker and left. You never another. know. Made a great throw to throw Follinsby out of the plate. Yeah, another great throw from him. You never know. Looks like he had a beat on it, too. Another foul ball. Over the cars. Yep. You know, Alex had making Revard work at the plate. I was say, Revard's throwing a lot of pitches here. Revard started with three balls, then settled in and threw some strikes. And Alexson's been on every single one of them. Fouling them off. That is hit a mile high twisting, twisting. And just foul. Revard can't quite get to it in time. You see a good job by the Hazen bench there to clear out of the way. So, you know, one of the guys could potentially play. make a play on it. Ben just still making him work at the plate. Pulling a Pete Rose on him right here. Sure is. I saw Rose Though fell off about, I don't know, 18 pitches one night. Finally got on base. Though you weren't worried about Pete Rose hitting a home run. No. Not but about. But he could hit. He could really hit. There it is. That is going to be out to Shopland in center. He's going to put that away. Can of corn. They're going to hold the runners at third. Good play by Shopland to catch it and get it in quick. To hold the runners where they are. The shopper. The Wildcats Two outs. may get out of this. Base is still loaded. With two down as Alex Lamphere steps in for the People's Wolves. Good battle, man. Shoplin, no problem out there in center for that one. Made some great plays. As always. Had a great interview before the game, too. That I got to witness between you and Shopper. Good times talking with Ethan. Great kid. First pitch is high from Revard, ball one. Him and uh, Isaiah hang out with Cody quite a bit. At, they've been up to our house. They've been at Isaiah's house. It's just quite the trio right there when they get together. It's a lot of fun. It's the big three. Exactly. That might be as good of a big three as uh, Garnett, Allen, and Pierce. <laughs> that is fouled back by Lanfair. 1-1 one, one now from Revard. For those of you who didn't know what I was talking about, Kevin Garnett, Ray Allen, and Paul Pierce, former big three for the mm. Celtics. Celtics play the Nets tonight, looking to dig out of a 1-0 hole in their series. Played pretty well in the first game for the most part, then just kind of fell apart there towards the end of the fourth. Hoping the Lakers can bounce back against the Suns. Low ball. 2-1 and one now from Revard to Lanthier. I shouldn't really say I'm a Lakers fan. I'm a LeBron James fan. Celtics are technically my favorite team. That is in the dirt. Run scores. Run comes home as Montgomery can find the ball, and we are knotted up one more time. 4-4. Four, four. Top of the six. Plays to first with no force, as you hear Rooney say from shortstop. Shortstop, the captain of the infield. Except for the catcher. Catcher's captain of the infield. But between first and third, short's the captain. And then out in the outfield, center fielder's the captain. I shouldn't say captain, but the center fielder's in charge. So it is three and one now to Lamphere. Pitch from Revard. That is fouled off. That's going to catch the Hazen batting cage and scoot right off the other side. PA batters making Tyler work here. Yes, I was going to say earlier, Lance, the only knock I have on the Hudson soccer field is that that one goal is slanted. <laughs> Results in a lot of goals. We'll work on fixing that for next year, James. Time as Lanphier steps out. Maybe I'll even get to call a soccer game with you, Lance. Anything can happen. I, you know, I don't know the rules quite as well as you probably do for soccer, but I, I've always enjoyed watching soccer. I've learned the rules as I've gone along. Well, you've called soccer for a long time. For, yeah, for a little bit. A few years at least. Pitch from Revard. That is strike three called. Revard is going to get out of the jam. That has been a low call. You know, that pitch hasn't been called a strike all game. It's been low, but I'm going to give him one there. As we see a 4-4 game headed to the bottom of the sixth. 
And I'll take a second to read our sponsors here. You're watching Hazen Boys Varsity Baseball playing People's Academy. It is Tuesday, May 25th, 2021. We are sponsored by Buffalo Mountain Power Sports, 472-5522, Buffalo Mountain supports Hazen. And Sperry Lawn Care, when others can't cut it, they can. HGTV channel 1080 on your cable dial and streaming worldwide at www.hctv.us where you will find this game in the coming days. Wall to wall, treetop tall, worldwide on the web. I tell you, it was a lot of fun during uh, basketball, of course, not being able to have the crowd, so we were streaming, and we had people literally, I, I don't know about worldwide, but nationwide watching games. Oh, I'm quite positive of that. Heck, even when fun. I was calling, we had a lot of people watching the live streams and the broadcasts. A lot of fun. I mean, Leaf would look down and show me, and there would be sometimes upwards of 150 people watching mm -hmm. our live streams at one time. Mostly PA kids <laughs> watching me on the call. There you go. A couple of, Hayes, uh, a couple of Hardwick fans uh, watching it on HCTV. Seeing Isaiah Baker just absolutely be a joy to watch. Mm -hmm. Great three-point shooter. Best three-point shooter I've ever seen. Just at the, the high school the level. ball barely ripples in that when it goes through. It does. Great stuff. But no, what was fun, too, with the uh, live streams, we got the live chat going, too, and had people chiming in from wherever they were from. I remember we got chats from Jersey and California. That's awesome yeah. that you guys were able to set All that up. All over the place. Yeah, that was, that was a lot of fun. Leaf and Liz put their... Uh, Technology. Absolutely. They're good technology minds to use on that one. You know, what a lot of people don't know is Liz is really the backbone to this whole process. She really makes this go around. <laughs> if it wasn't for her, we couldn't be here, really. Well, and, and Leaf. Also, well, I guess technically it couldn't have, it stems down from top to bottom, I suppose. Right. We couldn't do it without Leaf, and then. Leaf couldn't do it without Liz, and then we couldn't do it without Liz. For all of us couldn't do it without Leaf. We also couldn't do it without Liz. You know, as White Flanders is going to step in now, Alexson still on the mound for the people's ball. He's sticking with him. As you see, he does throw pretty hard. Mm -hmm. At one time, his fastball was near 80 miles an hour. So it's probably about round 80 now. My arm would be a wet noodle right now if I was pitching like that the whole game. And Flanders takes a cut, swing and a miss. 0-2. Oh, Flanders could use an knock. Yeah, been a little quiet at the plate today, so it'd be nice to see him get a hit. And he swings and misses. Strike three to Ben Alexson. Maybe next time. As Fenton Meyer, who can hit the ball pretty well, stands in now. Double two. The ball softly hit to Doobie at second. He fires to Frazier at first, no problem. And PA on the verge of a one, two, three inning here. Hoping your pitcher can get all this, you know, minimal pitches, one, two, three, and save him. No, hopefully for the, for final, the you know? seventh. See what we can do. Tyson got on last time, right? 4 4. Bottom of the sixth. I think Tyson, yes, Tyson, Tyson did get on last time. Tyson did get on last time. Had a nice hit. Sure did. Davison's are very good athletes as well. They are. The Davison family, very prolific athletes and Hazen lore. Cody. Man, to see him go down the way he did in basketball really stunk. Could have used him a lot as senior year. Mm. I remember I was calling the game when he re injured his knee. Yep. Great soccer player as well. Very good. I thought he was going to come in on senior night, honestly. Tyson takes a cut. Foul tip into the mitt. Strike two. I saw him suit up before the game and warm up, so I was like, oh, is Aaron Hill going to pull something up his yeah. – is Aaron Hill got a trick up his sleeve here? Never know with Aaron Hill. You never know. Aaron likes to keep us guessing. In the dirt. He sure does. But that's what makes him so good. Oh, Cody is still here. No soccer practice, I guess, Lance. Okay. Cody's still here. Have to compliment him on his hot dog hat after the game. I think it's pretty sweet. Did Maybe he's just, that, I did not. <laughs> There's a bouncer right in front of the plate. Davison with good speed. Levin's going to pick it up. 
Crazy makes a good play over at first, play. though. Yeah, and just like that, one, two, three. Down goes Move the to the top of the seventh. Score tied, 4-4. Four, four. PA comes to bat. Hopefully, Hazen can get a little more one, two, three action. We'll see if we stick with Rivard here. He was pitched the ball pretty well. Much better than how he pitched on Saturday. Yes. And it looks like I mean, Tyler's good. made some great plays. He's pitched well. He made some great plays out there at shortstop. He really has. Like I said, he's been my player of the game contender so far. Just with defense alone and has had a couple hits and I think drove in a run. At least scored a run, I think. He has scored a run. I know that. I don't know if he drove in one, but he scored one. And we are going to stick with Rivard on the bump. Red Sox play the Atlanta Braves tonight. Right. No, you're not a Sox fan. No. And the Atlanta Braves are originally from where? Boston. Uh, Boston, I think. I believe they would be Boston. The Boston Braves. When Boston used to have two teams. That's right. The Braves and the Red Sox. back when now the Milwaukee Brewers were still an American League team. I'll, I'll never forget, you know, I don't I don't really understand you Red Sox fans, James. You guys snapped, how, how long was the curse when you guys won it in 04? 86 years. 86 years. You beat your arch rival New York Yankees in one we're of the most, in one of the most epic comebacks in all of baseball history, right? And all of sports history. All of sports history. You went into the World Series against the top team in baseball in the St. Louis Cardinals. And swept them. Four zip, no questions asked to break the curse of 86 years to win your first championship. And I'll tell you where I'm going with this in between innings here. All right, Rivard with the pitch. That's rocketed out to center. Joplin back. Joplin back. Puts it away. It's a catch. Little Chopper with no troubles out there in center whatsoever. Now, he kind of had to move back. That ball was hit a little harder, so that technically probably wasn't a can of corn. That no. maybe looked like a can of beans. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, green beans. Okay. As Landon Doobie steps to the plate now, and a fly out by Augie Levin. Get him going, Landon. Landon Doobie to the plate to face Rivard, who gets a quick first out, much needed first out. Mm -hmm. That ball's hit hard. Rude and... just pass Rooney. Runner on for That's the Wolves. That's one of the ones you hit just hard enough to get by. Doobie thought about second, but probably wise to stay at first. Here you go, Derek. Where you going? As Derek Baxter is going to stand in now for the People's Wolves with Frazee on deck. Derek Baxter, big bat for the People's Academy Wolves. Rivard with one out and one on. One on, one out. Rivard kicks and fires. See if we can get something, maybe turn a double play here. And, and that looked good to me. Little inside, but looks pretty good. But, you know, in this situation, you're always hoping to try and roll two. You've noticed, too, as the game has gone on, the up hasn't been quite so animated. He has not. He's maybe a little tired. Maybe, and a swing and a miss, and a good pitch by Rivard. That one had some heat behind it. That one had intent. Tyler throwing well. That one had intent behind it, as you would say, Lance. Yes, indeed. <sighs> one and one pitch. Runner goes to second. On the swing and a miss by Baxter. One ball, two strikes. Doobie moves into scoring position. No, Lance, I noticed you had that uh, Yucky Dallas Cowboys hat on today. Uh, this is a very special hat that I have. Well, A, I forgot my usual hat at home. I got down here and I'm thinking, oh no, I forgot my hat, but I always carry a change of clothes in my car, uh, including a hat. This hat I got one day when I stopped at the Elmore store from the late, great Warren Miller. Warren Miller was a phenomenal guy. And a Cowboys fan. So Inside, so I won't knock it too much. Thank you. Thank you, Warren, for Providing my head with some shade today. Another Otherwise, I'd have been in trouble. Should have been a strike by Rivard. Man, this ump is not giving him any. 
And when James Salvas is, is calling him this way, the homer that he is for the PA Wolves, you know. Let me tell you. There's something going on here. Three and two, two outs. One out. And a wave and a miss out. by Baxter. Now there's two outs. Now there's two outs, okay. As Rivera gets a much needed. I was, much looking at, I was looking at the wrong set of dots yeah. over on the right? scoreboard. And, and then you look through the, the mesh here of the screen and it's kind yeah, of like okay. hard. So now we have two outs. Runner on second for the Wolves. Score tight, 4 4. Tyler, nice pitch there. As Hayden Frazee stands in. Rivard kicks and fires. That's a high fly ball out to center. Rooney going to come out. Shoplin going to come nice in, makes catch. a nice basket catch, Willie Mays style. Nice catch by Ethan Shoplin right there to Andy. And down go the Wolves with a little whimper. So let me go back to my Red Sox story. Okay, so you guys snapped an 86 year streak of losing. Yes. And one of the most epic comebacks in sports history, you swept the National League juggernaut in four straight games. And this is in October of 04. In July of 05, I'm at a Judas Priest concert in Manchester, New Hampshire. I don't know who that is. And a guy walks in with a Yankee shirt on. And the crowd just hurled obscenities at him, garbage. Just, uh, it was like nothing I'd ever witnessed. Sounds like a Red Sox fan. I turned to my buddy, who's a Red Sox fan, and I said, what is wrong with you people? He says, what do you mean? And I repeated everything that what you know everything that they had achieved in October, and I'm like, you guys should be laughing at that guy. He goes, that's just the way we are, and I'm like, no. I don't get it. He deserved it. No. I just don't <laughs> get it. I'm not saying I personally would do that, but I, I mean, I really understand why you, Red Sox and, fans and do it. it was, but the the. The vehemence behind it all was just it had startling. <laughs> it had intent. It's like a Jaden Baker helmet throw. I mean, yeah. Intent. Oh, yeah. The, the intent was great. I mean, it was, but I, I just like, you, you guys should Probably be like. Beers, chips, yeah, hot dogs, yeah. whatever. I'm like, you guys should be mocking him, laughing at him, you know, whatever. Instead, they wanted to go down and, and just. The, uh, when the Yankees come to Fenway. Know, it's not a I, pretty sight. I I, 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 didn't, I didn't understand it, and I still don't to this day. It's not a pretty sight when the Yankees come to Fenway, let me tell you that. Okay. Or vice versa, when the Sox are at Yankee Stadium. Although also, know. you know, the Red Sox are the first team to come back from a 3-0 deficit. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. yeah. It's never been done. But you're still mad. <laughs> you're still mad. You did all that, and you're still mad. I, I don't understand. Well, I mean, Yankees can take their I don't get 27 it. world titles. And <laughs> Most of them came back in the 30s and 40s. And just for the record, James, Ju uh, Judas Priest is one of the most influential metal bands of all time. See, not a big metal fan. That's why okay. I didn't know that. I'll forgive you. I like you. rock and roll. But, uh, but I'll forgive you. You like ACDC, Lance? I absolutely. Seen them four times. Greatest rock band of all time. The Shopper. To the plate. Up to get things going here in the bottom of the seventh. Score tied. Rivalry game. PA against Hazen. Chance to walk See off what for happens the Hazen here. Wildcat. We've seen him do it before. And Shopper swung for Judavine on that one. He did. <laughs> We've seen the Shopper launch him before. I'm sure most of you guys know what I'm talking about, but for those of you who don't, Judavine Library right down the hill here from the Hazen, uh, Hazen High School. 0-1 pitch now. Shopper fouls one a mile back. That one might get the road. Sure does. Oh, tings off the car over there. Toyota 4Runner. Not mine. 0-2 now. Little Shopper. As he's going to watch the ball get to the backstop. 1-2 and two now to the Shopper. Ethan Shoplin playing his last regular season game. That's right, senior senior nights uh, early, had a little ceremony before the game, honored both him and Finn Rooney. Yep. The late great Yeah, I was Finn just Rooney. about to say the late great Finn Rooney. That's hit hard, Frazee's gonna scoop it up no problem and step on the bag. As Shopper. you see, good defense over there all day from Hayden Frazee. Shopper really wanted to get on, you see the clap of the hands. He really did. And That's the helmet it. goes, well, to the Eight. ground. Give him by the five. He plays style, you know, just like I said, the the, the fortitude and uh, the integrity that he plays with, you know, goes to show on that. A lot of guys that could be a player of the game nominee today. Tyler Rivard has done very well. I think well. Rivard is 
going to take in the, the lead right now. now. He is. Especially if he gets a knock right here. First pitch to Revard. That is a strike. Good pitch by Alexson, who is still on the mound in the seventh. But He's gone the distance so far. That's right. Revard, excellent. Er, Revard. Revard's an excellent pitcher, too. But Alex, an excellent pitcher for the Wolves. Revard's going to kick and deliver. Alex is going to kick and deliver. Revard hits one foul. Jesus, Lance. Messing well, that up. That drops the count to 2 Sure does. Revard got to protect now anything close. Anything even remotely close that he can put a bat on, he's got to put a bat on. Whether he fouls it off or what. Got to protect in this situation. Keep Alex in pitching. Yes. And his pitch counts have got to be pretty high already. So Revard looking to keep this bat at bat alive is what I'm trying to say. And he's going to watch a ball. I think we got bailed on that one. That was close. I've seen that call to strike today, too. So I think we got bailed on that one. Lance. From this vantage point, James, I couldn't really tell. And that's my honest assessment. Yep. I thought it looked good, but. Revard doing what he has to do there yep. to protect, fouling Staying off. Staying alive. Good song. Oh, legendary classic song. Oh. Alex steps off. A one two count now to Revard. Revard fouls her off. Oof. Off the bumper of the car. That is not a good place for a car to be parked during a baseball game. Especially when Revard fouls one off. Revard, you know, like I said, doing his job at the plate, protecting, fouling it off. Making Alexson pitch. That's what he's doing. Alexson kicks and fires. High, ball two. Said Ale Alexson struggled a bit early in the game, but then settled in. Hazen Bench really chirping over there. Sure are. Squawking, I'll go with. Squawking. The Seagulls squawking. Yeah. 2-2 Two -two now for Revard. Pitch from Alexson. Oh. So, Revard a little frustrated on that one. Waving a miss. Revard making him work, though. Hopefully tiring him out a little bit. Four. The Two butcher. Outs. The baker. The home run maker. Two outs now here, Baker, bottom of the seventh, score tied, 4-4. Four, four. Baker, who's been quiet at the quiet plate Quiet at the today. plate, made some great defensive plays, but hasn't sure done has. that much at the, well, he did lay down the one nice bunt. He did, Well, besides that, he's been quiet. Laid down a couple nice bunts, actually, in sacrifice situations. Outside for a ball to Baker. Just a little outside. Alexson kicks and fires. Baker fouls it off. Now I gotta ask you, James, as a player, whether you're whether you're a hitter, whether you're a pitcher, catcher, whatever, when the bench really starts squawking like that, do you even hear it, or are you you able to just you're concentrating so hard you can block it out? Uh, I think it depends on who you are. Yeah. Were Some you able to block it out better than others? Um, I mean, I never really got chirped much because every time I was in the game, we were getting smacked. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I never I never really got it too much, mainly from my own guys. When I think. You hear it more from your own guys cheering sure. you on and less from the other guys chirping. Sure. Unless they're saying some really vile stuff, which is bound to happen at a PA Hazen game. <laughs> Being a spectator of that for many years, trust me, I know. Oh, I know. Taking part. <laughs> You're up there during the basketball games. Of course, our broadcast booth, if you want to call it, is always sort of towards the visitor's side of the oh, bleachers it's always up there. On that. It's on the PA side. It can be kind of scary up there. Oh, you hear a lot. <laughs> Even with the, It's kind of hard to hear, though, sometimes. It's always loud. 2-2 two, two now to Jaden Baker. He'll leave that one for the Worms. Baseball turn mm -hmm. in the dirt. Worm burner, as Matt Vasquez says. Okay. I'm learning. I'm learning every broadcast with you, James. Yeah, I try and, uh, you know, I'm like Brent Curtis. I try and bring something different every time. There you go. Hello? I think we got a little lucky there, too, personally, but... Low. 3 2, full count. Two outs. Baker's got to protect. As this Hazen, fan, Hazen fans watch on eagerly. As do the PA fans. Yes. 
And he goes Three down swinging. Three strikeouts for Alex and Lewis. So uh, seven's not enough to decide this game. We're going to move into extra innings. Like I said, as it was a likely story to go to extras. 4-4 four, four score. So we will move to extra innings. Extra. Like Snap, we have the power. Yes, extra <laughs> innings now for Hazen and PA. Hazen Boys Varsity Baseball playing Peoples Tuesday, yeah. May 25th. Sponsors, Buffalo Mountain Power Sports, 472-5522, Buffalo Mountain Sports, Hazen, and Sperry Lawn Care, 745-8336. When others can't cut it, Sperry's can. HCTV Channel 1080 on your dial, streaming worldwide and archived at www.hctv.us. You know, Liz on camera, Lance on color. And going one on one with the great one, James Salvis, doing the stellar job on play by play, as he always does. Thank you, Lance. Nice nod to the rock there for you. Thank you. We talked last time, you're a big time wrestling fan. I follow it. Yep. We're gonna take a break, do a little battery thing. All right. And folks. Uh, George Thompson to stand in now for the People's Wolves to face Revard, who stays on the mound. Top of the eighth. Extra innings. Bonus baseball here today from Hudson Fields, Hayes Union High School. Man, Revard is getting unlucky on the mound. And I'm not one to normally complain about a referee or an official. That wasn't who I am, because I know they have a tough job. But still. I've seen you say that a number of times, James, so I'm going to take your word for it. Like you said, you know it's got to be bad if I'm saying that against People's Academy. That's right. Although, like you said, it's hard to tell from this vantage point. 2-0 to Thompson, and he fouls it off. That's going to hit the hill, where many spectators sit during a Hazen soccer game. Mm -hmm. Looks like Freezy may be getting to come on to pitch now for the Wildcats, getting a little loose with the weighted baseball on the Hazen dugout. Two and one now. And a wave and a miss. Good pitch by Revard. He has pitched very well on the hill for the Wildcats. Tyler's done a good job today. Sure has. On the mound, in the field, out to bat. Done well. 2-2 two -two now to Thompson. Revard gives him the stare. And he fires. That one's fouled. Ump vocal there to let us know. T-Rex. Foul ball. T-Rex, Tyler Revard. But like I said, Lance just does a fantastic job at his name and starting lineups, as he does with everybody. He does have a fun one to kind of enunciate when you're when you're really when you're really going for it. I do it now, but I don't want to blow everybody's eardrums out. Yeah, that ball is hard. Menard. The baller comes up, play Easy to first. Play dog out of the dirt by Gould. Nice play at nice first. Nice play by Asia. Low Good throw, dug sides. it out. Yeah, nice stop by Andrew, nice play by Asia. As, a, as a Matt Baskirchen would say, throw in the dirt, but a good pick at first saves an error. <laughs> Follinsby now, very good player for the People's Academy Wolves, stands in. Wears a good number, too. 23, number of the greatest basketball player of all time, LeBron James. <laughs> Throw in the dirt, blocked by Montgomery. Two words for you, Bill Russell. I mean, that's fair. I mean, he won 11 championships, but in my opinion, a lot of the guys back then played against doctors and lawyers. Mm. They weren't basketball players. <laughs> or not as religiously as they were. Yeah. That's hit hard on Shot the by Ooh, I thought the Mahler scooped that up on the yep. drive, but it just gets underneath it. Collinsby with another base knock. He's hit the ball pretty well today for the People's Academy Wolves. As I said, Collinsby, good player. Jack Lund now to step in for the Wolves. As you hear Spencer Howard yelling, Ethan, as that's where that ball went last time. Up to the shopper. Ethan Chopper, center field. Man on for PA, one down, top of the eighth. Score tied 4-4, of course. With one out, one to the plate. There's a strike by Revard. He's had that same pitch numerous times, called a ball. But he gets it that time for the strike. Revard takes a look to first. And he kicks and fires. Another strike. Good pitch as we see the hat come off, the patented Revard 
pitching. Hat loss. You got it, Jack. Jack Lund at the plate, down 0-2 to Reverd. Oh my. <sighs> Lund got off a lucky at the plate there. Might have been just a hair inside, but it looked on the corner to me. One ball, two strikes. One out. High to the backstop. Oh, Chandler's going to go to second. Yep. Montgomery's going to get to that one fast, though. Puts the Wolves in scoring position here. With one down. 2-2 two, two down to Jackie Lund. Revard the big, hard throwing righty. T-Rex on the hill. He's gonna kick and deliver. That's gonna be high for ball three and the count's full. Full count now for Lund at the plate. Here's the pitch from Revard. That is in there, strike three. Good pitch by Revard. Gets a call on that one. I knew that one was a strike. If that wasn't a strike, Lance, this headset was going down the hill. <laughs> yeah, that one was fairly <laughs> obvious, even from this vantage point up here. I mean, whew. Two like outs I, now. Like I said, you know it had to be bad if I'm calling against the People's Academy Wolves, but golly, I feel like Revard's been robbed a few times, but that one definitely a strike. They're going to go... Spencer uh, Howard going to go with the intentional pass now to Ben Alexson. Revard won't have to deal with him as Alex Lanfrey is going to step to the plate now with two on and two out in a 4-4 ball game. The bottom of the eighth. Top of the eighth. In extras. Bonus baseball. As is something that could always happen between the PA Wolves and the Hazen Union Wildcats. Definitely get your money's worth. Although I think one Foul of the best tip. basketball games all year is always Hayes and PA, but Hayes and Lamoille is always a barn burner. Mm -hmm. Lamoille is our other arch rival. Hayes and Williamstown. Hayes and Williamstown's a good That's one. Another great one. Fairfax PA in basketball is a good one too. I don't think anybody likes Williamstown personally, Lance. Sorry if there's anybody from there watching. <laughs> I got nothing. <laughs> Williamstown's a nice little town. Nice town. I don't really know anybody. Well, I know a few people there. They're nice people, but. Uh, Trust me, I've seen their fan section. You know, Not nice in that regard. Know well enough to really voice an opinion, I suppose. Oh, hit hard. Up the middle. Rooney dives. Yeah. He's got to eat it. I thought maybe he was going to get a chance to flip to second. Maybe get him, but. Couldn't, didn't quite have enough time to get him there. So we load the bases with two out. Maybe a, not a good decision to put the free pass on for Ben Alexson. But yeah. Spencer is very capable. I was going to say, Spencer's been doing it a while. Had to have a pretty good reason behind it. He did. You know Joe, good coach too. Opie wheeling him, wheeling him on down there, the trooper. The trooper. Reverd now kicks and fires. Levin hits one hard out to center. Shopper what will Shopper back. do? And Shopper That's puts it away. Ethan Shoplin. He's fired up. Hazen's fired up. The Hazen fans are fired up. Ethan Shoplin has played a heck of a game out there in center today. He's made at least three fantastic catches out Nothing. there. It's great to see what Ethan can do. Nothing. Here. Gets what, by Shopper. Once again on his final regular season game for the Hazen Union Wildcats. The lone senior tonight on the team here in person. Finn with us in spirit. He is. Willing Finn. us on. Finn watching from above. I tell you, Shoplin makes it look all too easy out there in yes. center field. Trust me, it ain't that easy being a center fielder. Center fielder, you know, you normally put your typically best defensive outfielder in center field and you can see for good reason why Shoplin's out there today. He's in escapes. Although Jaden Baker normally plays out there too, and he is not a bad fielder by any no, means. No, Jaden's made some great plays at left. He is, and Hayden Freezy, the hard-throwing lefty. Like I said, pitches sometimes. He is going to head to the mound. 
as Ben Ellickson's day is done. And he pitched a good game a for the People's game. Academy Wolves. Great game, went the full seven innings. Ben Ellickson gonna go to well. first. As Frazee and Ellickson are gonna switch roles here. As the Wildcats now with a chance to win it. We do Carter Hill and Cody Hall and Isaiah Baker yeah, would like yeah. to see a walk-off winner on senior <laughs> yeah, night. Absolutely. How tough is it, James, to go, you know, say Alex has been you know, pitched seven innings. Yep. Now he goes over to first. How tough of an adjustment is it to make to go from pitching to fielding? Um, I mean, granted, you field when you're pitching, but, I mean, this is, you know, it's, it's a different, it's different position. It's a different rhythm. It's a different thing. You know, I think a lot of times it would be tough to go from pitching to, like, first because, you know, first you're receiving all the throws from the infield. Right. You still got to make pop-ups. You know, you might have to – you know, catch a line mm -hmm. drive or field a one hopper on your own. Yeah. But, you know, Alexson plays first sometimes too. So, okay. you know, it's not, you know, I guess I wouldn't really say that difficult, but sometimes it can be yeah. very difficult. I was wondering about transitioning because it's such a different rhythm to what yeah. you've been in. You it know? just depends on how, like, who you are, I guess. Right. Because sometimes there's POs, which are pitchers only, and then there's sometimes, you know, guys like Alexson that go to the field after they pitch. Right. Or guys like Frazee that go to the mound after they were in the field. Yeah, the I mean, same can be said for Frazee. He's been over there, what, playing first? Now yeah. he moves to pitcher, you know. And, you know, it might be tough for the Wildcat batters, too, to see a lefty. Right. New pitcher on the mound, you know. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it takes you an at-bat to adjust. To kind of adjust, yep, exactly. Or, and sometimes it doesn't. It just, you know, depends on the day, I suppose. See what kind of strategy that uh, the Hazen coaches come up with here. Bottom see what of the uh, Spencer Howard and Joe Revard are coming up with. And Opie Upson, can't forget about the Trooper. She's 11, good arm behind the plate too for the Wolves. Howard is gonna make his strut down to third base. Revard's gonna head over to first. Rooney to the plate. Lyle, a heck of a ball player in his own right. Great ball player. I don't know if he plays any other sports. Might play soccer. I, I think he did he play that. soccer. Frazee on the mound now for the Wildcats, or Wolves. Jeez. First pitch from him. That is in there for a strike. Good pitch by Frazee. Frazee, huge Celtics fan. Big Red Sox fan as well. Little inside scoop there on. Mm -hmm. The south paw. That's hit hard. Doobie's gonna scoop it up. On to first, no problem for Doobie. One up, one down for Frazee on the mound. It's Asia Gould gonna step up to the plate. Trying to get something going as it's been a rough day for him at the plate too. Made some nice plays at first though. He has. See if he can everybody, get everybody that struggled at the plate is made up for it on defense. Especially Little Shopper. I think yes, uh, Gould squared to bunt, fouled it off. You see, nice day out here on the Dan Hudson Field. Oh, one now for Frazee. Outside for a ball that is going to be a 1 1 count now to Gould. Inside almost gets Gould. And that is going to be three and one now. It should be three and one. Two and one, I guess, on the scoreboard. Yeah, that's what I said. Two and one. Thought it was one out, bottom of the eighth. Gould swings and misses. Two, two. Aisha swinging for HCTV. <laughs> Down in the municipal building. Cool, foul, foul it off, off, did what he had to do to protect. So, and I get these situations, I always want to pull the line from Ferris Bueller's day off, where Ferris and his buddy are sending out the cup games. Yep. Yeah, bada, 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 swing, bada. <laughs> <laughs> Ferris Bueller's day off, great movie. Yeah. Pitch from Frazee. Foul back off. again. Gold staying alive. 
Gould making Frazee work on the hill. Carmen was his buddy's name. Carmen. Bueller. Yeah, Bueller. Bueller. Gould with the pitch. Er. <laughs> oh. Frazee with the pitch. Gould's going to watch it in the dirt. Three and two. Asia making Frazee work. Sure is. It's been a tough gonna, go of it. They're going to bring him into pitch. Is they going to make him pitch? Yep. And Gould fouls one, one back into the apple. Well, a little Another bit guy. right of the apple tree. Yeah. You ever eaten any apples off that tree, Lance? No. No? Crab apples, I'm assuming? Yeah. Yep, I'm going to stay away from them. 3 2. Nice hit. Oh, Gould rockets one to right field. The right wind. Fielder over to make the play. The wind held it up. Alex Lanfear, the wind does not help Gould there. Oh. If the wind had died down, that might have been down for at least a base knock. Here's the mauler. Andrew Menard. The second player to play hockey yes. for Hazel. Which is still a very good feat. It is. I don't think hockey is a well-renowned sport here. Right? Not at Hazen, but uh, you get over to like Linden and St. Yeah. Jay and uh, you know Harwood, U32, Stowe, Stowe Spalding. Strike from uh, strike from Frazee. You know, and another thing, uh, I lost my train of thought, Lance, I was going to say. It was about hockey. I just can't remember what I was going to say. 0-1 now to Menard. Menard watches it for a ball. Whew. That looked good. My pal Hayden Frazee not getting the call there. I guess we'll say that the ump has been, ump has been inconsistent. Has been consistent at being inconsistent. Yes, he has. There's a strike. I was going to say, if that one wasn't a strike. That's like agreeing my to shoe's disagree, coming off. you know? Yeah. Say, if that one wasn't a strike, my shoe was coming off. Mm -hmm. One and two, two outs. Menard in the hole. Swing. Menard Goes waves and misses. We're going to nine. Frazee pitched well on the mound. Like I said, big southpaw. I remember him in his varsity debut against uh, U32 at PA. Pitched a whale of a game that day. Pitched a beauty. So we move to the top of the ninth. Sponsors getting uh, more bang for their buck today with this baseball game. Sure are. Our sponsors. I don't even know why I'm still looking at the sheet, but I will. <laughs> <laughs> of course, this is Hazen Boys Varsity Baseball playing against the People's Academy Wolves. Tuesday, May 25th in the year of our Lord 2021. Sponsored by Buffalo Mountain Power Sports. 472-5522. Buffalo Mountain supports Hazen. And Sperry Lawn Care. 745-8336. When others can't cut it, Sperry can. Isaiah Baker is going to be Ex exiting the building. HCTV channel 1080 on your cable dial streaming worldwide and archived at www.hctv.us. Liz on camera. I'm Lance. I'm doing color. James Salvis doing play by play. We are doing a yeoman's work out here today to cover this game for everybody. Sure are. But Putting some extra hours in today. Everything we expected and more. Oh, yes. You know, you never really know what's going to happen between the Hazen Wildcats and the People's Academy Wolves. Anything can happen, it usually does. Refart is gonna stay on the hill for the Wildcats. Spencer sticking with T-Rex. And I don't blame him, T-Rex has thrown the ball very well. well. I think uh, Spencer's gonna be much happier with his performance on the mound today than Saturday. Absolutely. So you see, uh, as I said, the Hazen faithful now looking on with intent. Especially Cody Hall. <laughs> he was at Saturday's game, or the first one, I think, or one. Mm -hmm. of, uh, maybe it was Williamstown. Yeah. Doobie hits it hard, and Menard can't scoop it up over there at third. That took a rough hop off the grass. Can't get a play on it. Although Andrew Menard's, nice to keep it in front of him, you know. I was going to say, Andrew is, I'm sure, used to having fast moving, ob fast moving hard objects hitting yeah. off his chest. <laughs> Coming his way. His hockey is no easy feat. as Baxter is going to step to the plate now for the People's Wolves, number six hitter. 
with the runner at first, no out. Baxter tries to lay down a bunt. Gould to first, can't hang on to it. Thought he might have got him too if he hung on. Good snap throw down Quick by throw. Montgomery. You know, we're seeing the great arm of James Montgomery behind the plate. He's back, letting him know he's there. As a strike on the first pitch as Baxter kept his bunt down. Pitch from Revard. Baxter, sky high out there to right center. Can of, Can of corn. corn. Can of corn out there for the shopper who's made some great plays out there in center field. Not missing a beat. It's like he's out there every day. Probably because he was before he had to step in for Montgomery. For a brief couple games. One down. Like I said, it's not Montgomery's first game back. He played last night against the Loyal. According to Spencer Howard himself. Skunked him, 15 zip. Spanked the Lancers. Be up on the Lancers. Keep driving down Route 15. Go hit it. Keep uh, driving down Route 15. Next town after Morseville, you'll get to Hyde Park. Mm -hmm. Only the Loyal Lancers. We're not huge fans of the People's Academy Wolves either. There's a high pop, that's gonna twist over towards the Hazen bench. Revard reaches for it, can't quite get to it. We've seen a couple almost catches over there by the Hazen dugout. Mm -hmm. See the wind picking up a little bit here now. At, uh, yeah, cloud's kind of moving back in, could be the vortex. Yep, vortex, just kind of circles them around. Well, then always, we see a lot more blue always, sky though. It's always up there. Sure is, drive one. especially in Greensboro. as it is now a 1-1 count to Hayden Frazee. The 1-1 from Rivard. That is hit hard on the ground. It's a second for one. First, it's not in time, but they get the runner at second. Almost. Get the lead runner, so great play there. Almost the Taylor made 6-4-3 double play. Frazee really digging it out at first base. You hear the coach there. saying, dig, dig, dig. Yep. Jeff Small over there coaching first. Jeff Small, fantastic bowler. Bowled with him many, many years in the Friday Night Classic League at the old Morrisville Bowl. Sure God, is. I miss that place. I, you know, my parents do too. Oh, I miss that place. God, I wish if that was still around when I was in high school because I know a lot of kids in my grade, we would be spending a lot of time there because it's was, just something to do, you know what I mean? That was the mecca back in the day. Swing and a miss by Thompson on the first pitch by Revard. Two outs now, 4-4 four, four game, top of the ninth. Saturday night, red pin bowling, Sunday morning, rent a lane. God, it was fun. Where Menard Zagway is now. Hit hard on the ground, the Mahler Menard dives. Gets to his feet, and he's out at first base. What a play by Andrew the Mahler Menard. He I does it. I thought the all. runner had him beat. Menard, great throw over there. I thought the runner had him beat too, but Menard dives, picks it on a hop, and fires the across the diamond to first. What a play. What a play by Andrew Menard. Hazen defense comes up big one more time. I really thought with, uh, the PA runner might PA have beat with runners on, yeah. I really thought the PA runner might have beat that one out too. I thought so too. You could see was Tyson close. was ready for him at second. He, you yeah. know, was he going to make the, you know, the easy throw to second, or he said he went across to first. It was, you know, very close. But Jeff didn't really argue it much either. So sure didn't, and you know the head coach Keith Woodland didn't come out and seem to argue it either. So now we're going to the bottom of the night. Still four four. Frazee's gonna step back to the mound. Pitched great in the bottom, uh, top half. Bottom half. Yeah, pitched great in the last bottom half for the Wolves. Thought maybe Fallensby might have came on to pitch, but why take Frazee out? He's pitching well. I'll take a second to read our sponsors here one more time. You're sponsored by Buffalo Mountain Power Sports, 472-5522. Buffalo Mountain supports Hazen and Sperry Lawn Care, 745-8336. When others can't cut it, they can. HGTV channel 1080 on your cable dial and streaming worldwide at www.hctv.us. This will definitely be one for the archives. Sure will. At hctv.us. Many archives. 
you guys enjoy hearing Lance on the call, you can go back, watch the basketball games from the winter and the soccer games from the fall. And I'll bet you there's still games on there that you did as well. Oh, I'm sure. Because trust me, that thing goes back years. Because I've gone back to watch old PA games. Because once you're there on the internet, you're there oh, yeah. forever. Especially when you're on the HCTV airways. To infinity. And, and I back. have access to all my games anyways. Right. Via a link from Leaf. Ah. <laughs> on Vimeo. You see, the chirping has already started, and there's not even a batter in the yeah. box for the Hazen Wild. <laughs> New Brand batter for Hazen, eh? Brandon Crawford is going to seen him. We haven't seen him bat yet. Brandon Crawford is going to pinch hit for Wyatt Flanders. Wyatt was pretty quiet at the plate today. He was. So we're going to see so if we can get some get action going with Crawford here. Big bat of Brandon Crawford. Frazee now looks. Frazee's going to kick and deliver. That's going to be a strike. Good pitch by Hayden Frazee. Hard throwing southpaw from the People's Academy Wolves. Crawford is going to see his first pitch of the day. Crawford. Wave and miss. Crawford didn't get much action on Saturday. Back in there today. As you said, 15 zip for these Wildcats over the Lamoille Lancers who've struggled. I mean, the Lamoille's record was 1 in 10, yeah, going into the game. So. But they do play D2. Three pitches, three strikes, one out for Fraser. Up and down for Crawford. Fenton Meyer in the stand in now. We know Fenton can get some hits. Hokey put one right up on that hill down the left field line. Maybe hit it over the head of. Uh, George Thompson. Oh, Meyer with a check swing. Sw check swing hit down to first. Two up, two down as Frazee has been sharp on the mound. Tyson Davison up next. Let's see. Let's hope Tyson going. can get something going. Two outs, bottom of the ninth. 4-4 four, four game. Now batting for the Hazen Wildcats. Number two, Derek Jeter. <laughs> <laughs> One of only two Yankees I'll ever respect. The other being Mariano Rivera, who has dined at Doc Ponds in Stowe before. One of my friends waited on him. Yeah. Actually. Huh. Him and Bernie Williams. Tyson that is fouled that back, back by Tyson. Ooh, Over just, the cars. Just misses the vehicles. That's a good sign. Seen a couple get tagged today. Lightly, though. Yep. <sighs> oh, 01 now to Davison. That's Digs it hard. Down. The second. Doobie, nice play. Fires to first, and we are going to 10. Job, Hayden. As Liz shrugs over behind the camera. Is my knees shrug over here? <laughs> my hips. Everything. I was going to say, yard work at the I was say if we don't score here, this goes one more inning. I'm going to sit, but I, I just feel like I'm in solidarity with Liz. She's got to stand, so I'm going to stand. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Although I. Liz and I did sit on Saturday, let me <laughs> tell you. <laughs> well, yeah, you guys had two games, though. They gave us sandwiches, though. You missed out on that. Oh, man. They gave us free sandwiches and water nice. and chips. I did get pizza on my way home, so. Yeah, you can't beat that from where? The Hardware House of Pizza? Actually, uh, Down to see the no. Basiliatuses? I did not. Um, positive pie? No, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm, I'm not going to say where. Um, why I spoil it? Yeah, why spoil it? Why, well, secret? I wasn't local, so I didn't buy local. Secret, um, secret place, Lance? No, no, I wasn't local, so I didn't buy local. Well, Lance, I was going to try. But and I try to support local as much as I can. Oh, me too. But sometimes you got to branch out a little bit. Yeah. I didn't know where you were, so I'm not going to try and guess the pizza place. <laughs> By the way, Lance, Marshfield General Store makes great pizza. Uh, let's see. Yeah, if I'm not going to buy local, I mean, yeah, I mean, obviously you go with Harder House of Pizza. You go with. Uh, you know, Posit Pie. Another great place to get pizza is Smith's Grocery up in Greensboro, Bend. They do fantastic pizzas up there. I have um, never had their pizza. You've never had their... I've heard good things about have it. Have you ever had their poutines? I don't think I've ever been to Smith's Grocery. You haven't You haven't lived, James. My, my mom's probably been there quite a few times, I'm I'll sure. bet. Uh, but no, Smith's makes great pizza. And, I've heard uh, of it. Great, I definitely great, know what it is. I've fantastic poutines. 
Um, other places where I've gotten good pizza around the, the greater Northeast Kingdom, let's see, Scampi Store up in West Charleston makes a great pizza. Jay Village Store up in Jay makes a decent pizza. Um, pizza Man in Lindenville. Pizza Man in Lindenville. I don't know if you've ever yeah. been there. Yeah, I've been there. Hit hard by Fallensby, and that's through for a base hit. But uh, but with three great Lindenville places. Lindenville House of Pizza is good, too. With three, yeah, yeah. Uh, Yes. Uh, Trust me, I know being in that that little area, I gotta find food somewhere. George, in the George couch. and Linnell over at uh, Linderville House of Pizza. Yeah. Nice people. Nice but, people. Uh, they are. But we got great places right around here. You know, you got like I said, we True. got Hardwick House of Pizza. You got Positive Pie. You got Smith's Grocery. Um, I don't want to leave anybody out now. I'm trying to think if anybody else makes pizza in our in our area. First pitch by Revar just outside. Thought it was a strike at least. Whew, looked good. As James and I rate pizzas. Best I've. Snack bar, oh, very good uh, as yeah, well. Yeah, Mountain yes. View snack yes, bar. Yes, Mountain View snack bar. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It is good. Slices are this long too, huge. Yeah, those people are from like Long Island, so they definitely yeah. know how to yeah, make Yeah, so they know what authentic pizza is. I can't is think like. of the name. I, I, the name will come to me. I can't yeah. think of it right now, but yeah. I don't get their pizza often, but once in a while. It is good. I have had it. Oh, one well, good pitch from Reverb. Um... I'm trying to think, if you've never had it, Lance, the best pizza I've ever had in the state of Vermont, and I've had a lot of pizza in this state, is Morseville's Pizza on Main. Fantastic pizza. Oh, I haven't been Phenomenal there people make everything homemade. As we rate pizza, pizza makers in the greater Northeast Kingdom and <laughs> outlying areas of yes. Vermont here. Yeah. Pizza on Main makes the best barbecue chicken pizza. You're welcome, Pizza on Main. Sponsor us. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go back to Smith's then. They do a barbecue chicken. They do a buffalo chicken pizza. They're just phenomenal as well. I'm more, I like pepperoni, but, you know, I branch out yeah. once in a while. Because it is a full count now to Jack Lund. You can't not love pizza, unless you're lactose intolerant. Although I know lactose intolerant people that probably love pizza. 3-2 the count. No outs. Runner Top at of the first. Run at first. Inside ball. Revard now in a bit of trouble. As this game is going forever. Speaking of which, Lance, I might get a Hydro Casa Pizza on the way home. I'm thinking I'm going to need something by the time we're done here. Absolutely. Yeah, I am starving. That ball is rocketed to right field. I think that is Fenton Meyer out there. It sure is. Throwing oh, in. and he drops it. Ooh. And now we've got the bases loaded for the People's Academy Wolves. The bases are drunk for Alex Lamphere. Yes. I have always been a fan of the meatball grinder at the Hardwick House of Pizza. Which they do make, certainly make good grinders. Good food just in general. Though. Excellent creamies. They're going to stick with Revard here. I mean, we've seen both right fielders for PA and Hazen drop balls out there. Uh, it was, it was a while back yeah. when it uh, looked Alex like the PA Lanfair. player lost, lost it in the sun. Maybe Alex Lanfair, who's just, at the plate right now. You know, Meyer had to play on it. Wind a little tricky. I'm telling you, if I was Revard, me I'm and the ump would be having a conversation after this game. <laughs> He is just not getting the benefit of the doubt. Especially, you know, a lot of times in a jam, you are going to get that call. There's a strike. You know what? Definitely he's been working for what he's got this Hydra game. Hydra Pizza, known for their calzones. They make good poutine. Mm -hmm. Good mozzarella sticks. <laughs> good pizza. Good grinders. Everything. Someone's got to feed the commentators. <laughs> right? Yeah. Good pit. Revard in there, low yeah. for ball. Can you tell we're getting hungry? <laughs> oh. Lance and I have been talking about pizza for 20 minutes. <laughs> I'd like to call in an order, but this game could go for another hour. <laughs> sure could. The Vasilianises, who their kids were all good athletes. Got the force at home. Force at Safer home. Safer first. Hey, you know, got the lead runner at the plate. Prevented a run. 
which is exactly what play. we needed. Heads up play there by Rooney. Smart play to go home there. Had time. Strong throw to the plate. Augie 11 to step in now for the People's Wolves. Next inning, we break down cheeseburgers. Yep. That's what I call myself. I'm a burger con connoisseur. Connoisseur. I go all around the state trying those, too. Rocketed to right. Meyer. Meyer. Comes home. Throw to the plate. Lundis safe. On a good throw by Meyer. Montgomery going to try and say he missed the plate. Montgomery going to say he missed the plate, and he tagged him, but they're going to say he's safe as it's 5-4 now for the Wolves. Revar I couldn't just, really tell. Revar just when he thought he was going to get out of it. Pretty good throw, though, by Meyer. But he led him more to the opposite side of the way the runner was coming. He did. He you wanted to get that ball which, more left. If he had had that more left, I think Montgomery might have, have him. got him. Might have had him. He had kind of had to curl away from where the runner was coming in. That was a strong throw. Now yeah, great throw just to get it to home. Yeah. Runners at second and third now with two outs as Landon not, Newby steps in. Not knocking the play by, uh, by Fenton at all. No. Recover, you know, made a recovery from his last bobble. Exactly. Puts it away. Exactly. Are they and that's the thing in like baseball, that? too. It's like basketball. You just got to try and forget yep. about it and it's get the mental, next one. It's a mental game. But in my opinion, I think baseball is one of the most mental games. Oh, yeah. Because baseball, you know, basketball, you have teammates that can help pick you up. Right. And baseball, baseball is a team sport and a singular sport at the same time. And if you make an error in baseball, you can get so in your head so quick. Although every game, one, only one team goes home happy. So. We'll see if Hazen can rally now that they're back at the top of the lineup in the bottom of the inning. Chopper to lead off. 2-0 now to Doobie. Oh, wow, that is cranked. That's going to score a few. Baker gets to that one quick. Nice throw in. Couple. Cut. Toby Couple wipes the bases clean. And now Hazen down by three. It'll be tough to come back. It is now. doable, though, and we've seen it happen for can these Hazen Wildcats. Anything can happen in the great game of baseball. As Joe and Spencer are going to stick with Revard. It's like, uh, it's like Lou Brown in Major League when he decided to stick with Vaughn after the Grand Slam. Two outs. Tyler looking to get this third out and move it down to the bottom of the tenth. See if the Hazen Bass can come back alive. Like I said, top of the order, so you got your, you know, your four best hitters coming up. If you're going to go into it, go into it that way. Yep. Chopper, Revard, Baker, Rooney. A murderer's row if there ever was one. Oh, deadly. Revard 2-0. High ball three and Revard struggling. Revard pitched well until this inning and the PA bats finally came around and got to him. Baxter at the plate. Oof, ball four. Tyler's like, what do I got to do? Yeah, right? That's the thing we see with Tyler though. He gets frustrated. He's got to yes. keep his head into the game. Yeah. Yes. That's, you know, yeah, that could I, be. A, the frustration is clearly understandable, as even yes. James Salvis has gone against his PA Wolves and said and that Tyler should be getting some of these Spencer calls. Howard on his way out to the mound, and this might be it for Revard. So, but uh, still. Spencer Howard, I think you would still be pleased with how Revard pitched today, because all in all, Revard threw the ball pretty well. He didn't well. do bad. Until this inning, he did well. I mean, for five innings of work. And who comes in? The shopper. And the shopper is going to make his way in. He's going to ask for a new glove. We are going to get to see little shopper who's going to end his last game on the mound. Shopper on the mound. Little shopper. Let's see if he's going to channel some of uh, Russ's magic. Yeah, we still got runners on first and second. There are two outs. He's so. going to inherit those. If those runs come in, they will be earned runs towards Rebard. 
As I don't know who is going to go out to center now, they're probably going to move Jaden over to center. As Tyler goes to short, Menard stays at third. Jaden goes to center. Rooney's going to go to left. Rooney moving all around the diamond today. Third to short to left field. Baker to center now. As we see the shopper, Ethan Chaplin. You see kind of a three-quarter sidearm release by mm -hmm. Shopper. Looking kind of like Justin Masterson for that, you know, starter that only probably diehard baseball fans are going to know. I was going to say, I have no idea. I think he was an all-star one season. Wasn't that good. But I just know, but everybody knows him for that kind of wacky windup. Sure. Three-quarter sidearm. Pitched for the Red Sox for a couple years. Thank God we got rid of him. <laughs> it's like Clay Buckholt. Another person only probably Sox fans are going to know. <laughs> Do remember the name. It was very good for a long time. Always came through in the playoffs when we needed it. Then he and folded, so they got rid of him. Yep, or as my mom and dad like to say, Clay Suckholt. <laughs> This will be new, seeing uh, the shopper take the bump. Now, James, does he have a number of pitches he throws, or is there a time limit on this, or what's, what's the scoop when you're bringing a pitcher like this? I have zero clue. I think, you know, in this situation down three, just let him go. If he's pitching well, just let him go. But, I mean, now during the warm-up is what I was saying. Oh, uh, I believe you get eight. Eight? Okay. Yeah, and I agree. You let him go until it's yeah. done. No, but in warm-ups, I believe you get eight. You get eight pitches, okay. Yeah. Hayden Frazee steps in now, who has pitched a beaut on the uh, yes, for yeah, coming in for the Wolves the last yeah, two innings. Done well. He has just stunned the Hayes and Bats. Shopper is confused as why that was not a strike. Long they, look they, down. They marked it up as a strike. Oh, did they? They did. Didn't hear him say anything, so I really couldn't tell you. I guess, yeah, the ump's getting tired. He hasn't been too animated. There's there we go. Strike two. Back-to-back -back strikes by Little Shopper. Screw it. I'm sticking to his old. Oh, they did change it. Okay, they did change it. Okay, 1-1, one, 1-1. One, one. One. Okay. The first one looked more like a strike than the second one. That's high. Yao Ming couldn't hit that. <laughs> True. Those of you who don't know Yao Ming, 7'6", NBA Hall of Famer. Very, very good center for a lot of years. Frazy pops one up. Twisting, twisting over behind Going first. Way over. No play for Asia. No play, and Doobie's going to have to trot back to second. Here, Jay LaCour's mom over there. Jay and Dennis LaCour's mom over there. One of the biggest supporters of Hayes and Wildcat sports. She's here every game. Sure is. Doesn't miss a basketball game either. No. Dennis, a heck of a ball player, too. Amazing. You probably got to call his 1,000-point game. I did, and that was a moment I will never forget. You know, same with me getting to call, you know, Isaiah's 1,000-point yeah. game. You know, like I said, it's it's not too often that a commentator gets to call a 1,000 and 1,000-point 1, yeah. game, but, you know, we were both lucky to. To be a part of that. A, a you got one. A and, privilege. Yes, true. You got one for Dennis, and I got one for Runners Isaiah. Runners go. Tyson Runner Davison. Wow, Runner just over score. his head. Next runner goes to third. Davison. Runners at the corners. Davison had to jump like MJ on that one to try and. Thought he was going to get it. I thought he stabbed it. I thought he stabbed it too. Man. It's a uh, burning daylight here at the Dan Hudson Field. Feels like we've been here for eight hours. It's only, let's see, the game started at 4.30. It's currently 7.18. Marathon game. We have been here for a hot minute, as us young folk like to say. Hot minute. George Thompson to stand in now. 9 4, Wolves lead. Shopper steps off. Here you go, George. Looks both ways. Got to check them both. Make sure nothing's going on. 
You see Rivard wearing, or uh, Shopper, Shopper wearing these stirrup socks, the high stirrups. That is fouled off. Nine for People's Academy Wolves lead in the top of the 10th. Who, unless Hazen smacks the ball around, if they hang on the bottom of the 10th, will come at him. tough down five. I don't think it happened, but it's going to be tough. That's the crazy thing about baseball. I've seen 9 0 leads erased, at least at the major league level. But, you know, if you're paid millions of dollars to play a sport, I'd hope mm. you're pretty good. And strike swing three. and a miss. Shopper gets him out. Little Shopper gets the strikeout, gets him out of the inning. So Shopper, in the brief appearance on the mound, on the mound. throws well. And he's going to have to come up to the plate to face. A great throwing Hayden Frazee on the mound. And, you know, I've got to use, I, I coined this phrase with Ethan when he was in goal playing soccer. And I, I've, got to, I've got to go to it one more time for this. A couple of those catches he made out there in center. Yep. Those were cheek squeezers. <laughs> <laughs> sure were. Those were cheek squeezers. Sure were. So I remember, you know, going back to that quarterfinal game here, my senior year against Hazen, chopper and goal. Mm. Made some great saves. He did. Although it came down to a late call in the penalty box and yeah. pretty hard to save a penalty kick. Mm -hmm. That it is. Because I still have nightmares about our semifinal mm -hmm. game. In fact, Lost in penalty kicks In fact, they home. gave it to him twice. They did because Somebody moved obstruction. or something, yeah. Although he was going to make them both either way. Right. Except missed one in PKs in the semis. So anyways, with uh, let, me do, let me give our sponsors one more read. Here as we move to the bottom of the tenth, with the Wolves now leading nine to four. This is uh, Hazen Boys Varsity Baseball playing People's Academy Tuesday, May twenty fifth. Sponsored by Buffalo Mountain Power Sports, four seven two five five two two. Buffalo Mountain Sports Hazen and Sperry Lawn Care seven four five eight three three six. When others can't cut it, Sperry's can. HCTV channel ten eighty on your dial, streaming worldwide and archived. www.hctv.us. Liz. Hanging on to the camera here. She's just trying to keep to her feet right now. <laughs> sort of hanging there. And, uh, actual score. Oh, they've made it 8-4 now. Did they take a run off? I do not know. Looks like it. I guess so. Well, okay. So it's, eight. so it's 8-4 now. Griff probably having a better time at home <laughs> than holding the camera. Yep, okay. Let's do it. So... As the shopper stands in, one of the most dangerous hitters in the Hazen Wildcat lineup. We've seen it a lot this year. Seen him launch him. Well, he didn't launch that one. Nope. That Shopper's going to go down swinger. Swing he it. is. You know Shopper ain't going down without a fight either. That's right. You know he wants to get a hit and his potential. Get something going here. Likely last at bat of regular season high school career. Strike two. Back-to-back -back strikes. Hayden Frazee has pitched an absolutely phenomenal well. game by the Hayes, uh, by the People's Academy Wolves. Out of the bullpen, I think he pitched better than their starter, honestly. Came on, He's, you know, after Allison almost, went the full seven, then he, he came on. He has been almost unhittable. Struck out guys left and right, it seems like. Yeah, Hayes and Bats haven't had much going on since he's come in. As you see, Shopper just going to try and chop that one foul. See uh, Chirpin from the Hazen <laughs> no bench. No idea what they're doing over there. It's baseball chance, Lance. Yeah, it is. Whoa! Behind him. That one bounces, almost hits Shopper in the ankles. Good scoop by Levin behind the dish. And that has got to be the most tiring position to play in a long game like this, too. Catching for 10 innings. Right. Crouching, throwing. You're just on your knees so much. There Cranked out to center field. London underneath it. Puts it away. The Wolves are two outs away. Solid hit, just unfortunately right to center of the center fielder. Wolves are two outs away from taking the season series. Much to the glee of my broadcast partner, James Hill. <laughs> I just want to see a good game. That's what I've seen today. Has been a great game. Even though, you know, Hazen kind of got it broke yeah. open on him last inning, it's right. still bad. Up until that last great half game. inning, it's been a good game. Revard going to try and T Rex add to his... Good ledger, ledger today. He's pitched very well. He fouls that off. Hit that thing a country mile, but foul. 
I think as good as Tyler has played, though, I got to get, I got to make my sentimental choice for the player of the game, at least for Hazen, is uh, Ethan Choplin. I agree. Great I catches agree. out there. Yeah, pitch, hit. My player of the game the for the People's Academy Wolves, if all goes well, is going to be Hayden Frazee. Hey, he's played well. Pitched well. Hayden Frazee, you know, didn't see a lot of him on the mound today, but he made. He, and, some, and some great heads up plays when he was at first. He did make some good plays at first base, so. My People's Academy player of the game is going to go to Hayden Frazee today. He's pitched a butte on the mound. And it made some good plays at first. <laughs> and it's a little shopper for Hazen. Tried to go out with a bang. Made solid contact. Sure did. Just the wind is kind of knocking balls down. I think if the wind weren't blowing, yeah. Drew Divine Library might have to put that one on display. <laughs> That one headed down to Hardwick Elementary. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and two to Revard. That one's hit sky high to left. The players give a chase. And out there in left, George Thompson with the can of corn. And the Wolves are one out away from ending this marathon of a game. The butcher, the baker, the three, the home run maker. Jaden Baker. Who unfortunately has not hit a long ball since we've no. been here. Hit that one at Danville, but since then his bat's been pretty quiet. As his helmet throw has been today. Yeah, I mean, he's he's made some good bunts today, though, to move guys yes, over right. in key spots, so, but yeah. he has not been part yeah. of the hit parade. First pitch from Baker, or to Baker from Frazee, is in there for a beauty pitch on the corner for a strike. Some pepper behind that one. Frazee's patented four-seam fastball. Oh, one from Frazee. I'm gonna say that was a ball because the ump didn't say anything. Frazee appealed to first. I think the, the uh, umpire said he went around. Whoa. <laughs> they got the count of two. Whoa. They had it up as a ball, moved it to there. I saw Frazee appeal to the, to the first baseman. They said he went around. As that is low, one two now to Baker. Frazee wearing number 51 on the hill. You know, I can't even remember uh, what number Hayden used to be. <laughs> uh, 51. Five. Dick, Dick Butkus, I think, or 51. And swing and a miss. The That's People's Academy the ball game. Wolves take it eight to four. As always, I'm James Salvis on the call with Lance, the legendary Lance Hall, Liz on tech. One on one with the great one. Yes, and Liz on tech and camera. Uh, we want to thank everybody for making Hazen Varsity Baseball what it's been this season. Hopefully we see you for some home playoff games. We think we're going to get one, but on the odd chance that we don't, thank you very, very much for all the comments and compliments on all the broadcasts this season, uh, once again, our sponsors today, Buffalo Mountain Power Sports, 472-5522, Buffalo Mountain Sports Hazen, and Sperry Lawn Care, 745-8336. One of those can't cut it. Sperry can. Hopefully we'll see you again, maybe one more time, if the playoffs happen here at Hudson Fields and Hazen Junior High School, Hard Vermont. Until then, we'll see you then. Bye-bye.